Welcome to Harley Initiated. It is your host, Tyshawn Jackson, in here with another episode of my co-host, Ryan Ketchins. Listen, I feel like the episodes been going crazy lately. Yes. So yeah, we, t- I mean, we just got to continue the trend. We have, listen, yeah. we're not slowing down. We're not stopping for the family. And tonight y'all have been requesting this conversation we are having because today we teach not just the ladies, but the brothers, all right? Brothers, come on in. This this show here is for you because we got these husbands on the platform and we about to teach the single men the game and we in here doing it with my first brother right here. Shout out to Ezekiel Azanwu. Look at him. Here Look on at him. Welcome, my brother. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here, man. This is... yeah. I'm in the I'm in the place to be. It feels like yeah yeah. 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 Listen, the, the show is is taking off, man. Yeah. If it are if we're not already lifted in the air. Oh yes. yes. And um, the the people that's actually tuning in will surprise you. I mean, wow. it's people in the space. Wow. It's it's high profile people. I mean, everything. They wow. watch. We got politicians, attorneys, doctors, yeah. <laughs> you know, commanders, chiefs, everything. Yeah. Yeah. So so the, yeah. so, the, so the brothers and sisters we got to bring on here. They got to be top notch. Absolutely. So also, while we in here rocking with my man Will Jackson up in here with us today, I'm welcome, what's up, brother. It's, that ja- yeah. it's them Jackson boys. I feel like it's gonna Jackson be special. Jackson boys is in here <laughs> rocking today. Right. So you see what's happening, and today we went and found us some married brothers for this conversation. Facts. Sure. Yeah. And we're gonna have a good one here today. Before we get into it, Ryan, talk to the people. Let them know what's going down. Listen, I just want to give a shout out to the brothers, man. The brothers come up here ready. Look at them, Chris haircuts, ladies. Hey, look. Chris they haircuts, hey, fellas. They showing you. <laughs> They, I mean, I show y'all all the time. <laughs> they but, say, don't you get know, it twisted. They, just hit, they hit for back. The funny, the, back funny, the funny thing is, they all got the same barber. Can I tell? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so we got some really amazing things going on with the initiate family, guys. I see we had seven initiates pop off the show before we even get started in the waiting room. So I just want to salute y'all for that. But I won't get too much into the details until a little bit later. Tyshawn and I, we're going to continue to drip a lot of the things that we're working on because we are planning some huge things, uh, huge guests, huge conversations, uh, huge events, everything for 2024. So please be patient with it. So the only thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to drop a link in the chat. And I just simply want you guys to forward us over your, your full name, phone number and email, because when we get things popping off, we want to make sure you're in the loop, especially my initiates. Also, at 30 minutes in, initiates only, baby. We got to. Yes, initiates only, meaning the chat will be for initiates only. If you're watching the replay, you need to make sure you're here at Monday and Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Because this is really where it goes down. The families ain't having conversation. But you're going to have a good time either way. So let's actually get to it, fellas. Well, first of all, look, before we actually go into a conversation, I want the people to get a good idea to profile of the brothers I got because I got some interesting brothers, man. I'd be hand picking these brothers for the for y'all, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't, I don't just y'all, you gotta understand it's like a heavy vetting process come now. On. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy because, like, yeah, he was interrogating us, man. I, I'm like, I gotta, come on, now. I gotta have a good conversation. <laughs> I gotta feel you, I gotta know what's going on. You know what I'm saying? I might have to show me my house. Let me see what you're doing. <laughs> right. Hey, run me your social real quick. Right, run me that social real quick. <laughs> but no, for real, man. Y'all brothers, I, I was I'm very impressed with you brothers as a whole. And um, first of all, you have been married now for 15 years. 15 years, yeah. I'm five fine. kids, man. Five kids. Five kids. Incredible. Man, five. I wish we, we should, we, man, we should have had a, a, a family pick for the Y'all people. Y'all don't got no up. photo? Yeah. Because let me tell you, what, the, family's, the family's beautiful, man. It's a beautiful wow. family. I, I just, I love the aesthetics of that. I've been following more brothers like you nowadays. Okay. You know, it's good to have so, that. So you're going to have five kids along with me. I need some people to Honestly, share in this. I'm th- I think I'm I think I'm good with like three. He's, right. You I can tell by like honestly. Three. He's like honestly. You're right. <laughs> the only way I'm gonna really go get five is if I get like four girls. Four girls. Oh, really? Yeah, if I get boy. four girls, I'm gonna I'm I'm shoot four. Yeah. So I'm trying to keep that, that last name going. I'm gonna try to keep the last name going. <laughs> Got you. If I get five girls, I'm out the games. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's real. That's real. <laughs> hey, but uh, will yourself? You um have been married now fresh in the game married yeah. for one hit one year now yeah what was the anniversary? A little over a year so july 26 okay yeah 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 so fresh. we um you know we are the beacon of hope you know so this is yeah. um our second time around in marriage and you know we've taken a lot of the lessons that we've learned from previous situations and being able to apply them and actually create that space where 
now we're just flowing in this uh what we call the good life space okay. we say it all the time man we just we got a good life yeah. so you went and that's interesting where both of you now yeah are on your second marriage yeah would that, would, did that concern you a bit? Like me and a woman who had a divorce already, were you a little bit concerned? Like, eh, it might be a little, might be a little red flags over here that it was a divorce. Did that not concern you at all? It didn't concern me because I'm one of those who's always looking at myself. So I can't judge you for coming out of a marriage if I've come out of a marriage. And I know that, you know, I'm always a forward thinker. So your past doesn't define you as far as where you are and what you've been through. It's, it's if there's the residue there. Is there a residue that's sort of lingering based on where you were? Are you still wounded? Are you still hurt? Are you healed? Are you whole? Because there's a difference. So, I mean, I feel like that we we met each other in that just that perfect space where we really weren't looking for it. You know, I came out of it and said I was done. She said that she was never going to get married again. And, you know, God had other plans. So when we met each other, it was like, OK, the things that I thought that were dead and I wasn't even looking for. It was awakened again so okay yeah. and what, what was that gap like in between the first marriage and the second how long were you so thinking? um 2014 so this is uh, i mean we're like eight nine years you know in between it's eight nine years yeah so you had the little detox yeah you know yeah, what i'm saying man. okay because you know, i mean i was it was one of those things that you come out of a situation and until you actually effectively heal you sort of just discard the idea of the potential of it returning back better than before. It's like human tendency is you come out of it and it's like, OK, this is my point of reference. Right. So if this didn't work, then maybe it's not in the cards. So it's you get into that place where you start settling or adopting the idea or the reality that this is just as you know, this is my lot in life until you meet something and you realize, okay, no, what I really wanted was available all along. I just had to be in the right place, had to be in the right space mentally, emotionally, mm. physically, financially, spiritually, and you know, then it presented itself. That, no, that makes perfect sense. And how yeah. long was the first marriage? We were married uh, almost four years. Okay. Yeah. First was four years. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, good. And I, and I want the people to get context because you can see this brother has worked hard, got out of one marriage. And he said, for, you know, he said he had to go back to it again. So obviously there's some yeah. good stuff in this, this marriage pie. Man, listen, that this has is the you place coming to be. Back. This is the place to be. You know, right. it's, it's one of those things that you realize that it's better on this side. It really is. When you when you have the person that you are created to do life with and you got the person who is qualified and capable to help push you and and to support you and you can create you have a different level of creativity in marriage oh, yeah. you got a different level of freedom in in your mind and your heart because there's certain aspects that provide that emotional safety for you to even do what you're supposed to do at the highest level mm. so it's 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 the it's the best place to be honestly and i i can obviously you come back so you let you it's you're, you're living the fact that that yeah. might be true came yeah. back again second marriage and Ezekiel can't leave it, you know. He's I can't, he's can't in let it, for, it go. He's in it for fifteen years. <laughs> yeah. So, and this is a, this is a very important conversation, sir. Because right now, in the echo chambers of social media, the conversation being propelled heavily from the red pill community mm -hmm. and just many br brothers who have had that painful experience with women that there are no benefits of marriage. Like I turn yeah. on my timeline and I see that. A ton even though i'm trying to follow less and less of the messages the reality is uh, uh, men are questioning yeah whether or not the value is there in fact i actually heard one today and i i pulled it aside because i wanted to play it in the show because the, the the video we're about to play right now is a good example yeah. of very common back and forths that you hear men having so lano go ahead and play that one for us because i want the audience to even get context to some things that's being said right now we're gonna get married. I don't want to get married. Why? There's no benefit for the man. He only has everything to lose. What? A man can be completely faithful to his wife, provide, protect, take care of the kids, you know, obviously when he's not working, whatever. And the wife can step out and cheat. And what's the result of that? Man has to pay alimony, has to pay child support, loses his house, loses the cars, 
loses everything why what's the point and then like it's a coin flip flip, flip a coin if your marriage is going to work those are the odds those are the those are the chances if you want to get married cool throw a wedding put the rings on each other say your vows you're married you don't have to submit nothing with the courts yeah. die alone the only reason why somebody is not okay being alone is because they're not okay with themselves mm -hmm. I agree. that's it like if you're not okay being alone you have issues with yourself that you need to mm. now we got a good glimpse of it all right. Yes, sir. You got a good glimpse of it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that alone will probably give you a good idea of what, you know, some brothers are saying. And again, you know, people are inundated seeing, you know, these celebrity divorces. Yeah. You know, they hearing their mom, maybe their mom got divorced. The, uh, they're, they're inside their household, their best friends. Obviously, that's happening in abundance. We seeing, you know, brothers take a blow. You know, the ladies take a blow and just did these different ways. And it's not looking sexy. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah. But you brothers coming back and staying in it, yes, right? sir. Yes, so, sir. So talk to my brothers. Let Let's start right here, because I want to talk about the benefits mm -hmm. of marriage to a man, right? Specifically to a man. And Ezekiel, help me out. Let, let, let Let's pop it off right here. Yeah. What would you say for you personally? How has marriage as a man benefited you? Ah, oh, man, it's too many. I I would just say this. As a man, and you guys will know as single men, there is this sense of freedom that we have to feel like, hey, I can be an individual, I can pursue, I can grind hard, and I have nobody to answer to. And we think that is the fullness of who we are until you meet someone that is able to be a mirror for you, to challenge you in areas where you didn't think you needed to grow, to mm. challenge you in areas where only someone else could actually compliment and build you up in. I realized that, man, there are areas as far as my sensitivity and my ability to process in areas where I thought I was wise. I thought I knew better. My wife came along and she showed me my blind spots. I realized how selfish I could be, how inconsiderate I could be, how immature I could be in certain areas. And even areas where I needed to heal that I did not know that I needed to heal. It wasn't until I ran up against the wall of her honesty mm. and her ability to see through and in me that I was even able to realize that I needed to grow. So I do believe that there are single men out here content in their brokenness. No one has been able to confront those areas of brokenness. Nobody's have been able to confront those areas of void and they've somehow been able to manage or mismanage and walk around with a self defense mechanism that they call personality. They're like, I'm like this because this, I'm like this because no, you built this up because you went through this. You built this up because you don't want to go through this. You saw your dad do this and you want to avoid this and you become this caricature and you say, that's me. No, that's pieces of your brokenness that you've glued together and you call it yourself and you realize why certain people are highlighting areas of your life that you think are okay. Like you, you can't stay in relationships. When things happen, you escape, leave things, you move around. You can't deal with authority here and there. You can't take this. You can't talk to your brother. You don't talk to your dad and you don't know what these things are. And sometimes you have a friend. I call, I call a wife a friend. If you can't find a friend in her that's able to show you, Hey, you're really impatient. You're afraid in this area. Have you ever had someone that just look you in the eye and say, I could tell you're afraid here. I, I could tell that you need to grow here or that's an area of immaturity. And when you have that 24 hour accountability, someone you can't escape, you wake up with them. They see you at your worst, see you at your best so they could love you at your worst and love you through your best. I don't think that I think that there's an aspect of growth that you will miss unless you have that person that walks through life through the most intimate and darkest parts of life with you. Do you think that. Because I can imagine it's a lot in that that a man especially that you have described glued himself up in this way yeah. to become this person his ego his pride probably won't allow him to receive certain levels of accountability from a woman oh yeah right were you already kind of prom for that when you when you first got into marriage or did you have to get that ego beat down and you know just had to lower your pride <laughs> in there to get it right or did you already have that straight before you stepped into it so the good thing is you know i desired the will of god and i saw the purpose of marriage before i got into it mm -hmm. i didn't say i was ready for marriage i didn't say that i was mature enough in every area but i wanted to 
chase and strive for the purpose, the greater purpose. I wanted to be a leader in my household. I wanted to raise kids in the fear of the Lord. I wanted to lead my wife in a particular way. And I value that. So if you're outside of that, that capacity and you don't value the institute, mm -hmm. you don't value what marriage means for the greater for the greater meaning of marriage, then you're always going to be at, oh, I'm not about to allow my money to go this way. I'm not going to allow my heart to be put in this vulnerable place because she could cheat on me. That's a fear-based mentality. But my, I was chasing, I want to be a beacon in my community. I want my children to see a father who loved their wife. If you don't value that, then you're go you're already going into it wrong. So me, I value that from 19 years old. And I said, God, I want, I want a wife that's like this, that honors you. And I want to lead like this. And so it didn't have to get beat in me. I welcomed the blows. Like when I saw myself make mistakes, I'm like, yo, wow, I got to be better. When I saw myself needed, needing to grow in areas, yes, it broke me, it challenged me, but I welcomed those blows because I realized, man, this is what I asked for. This is what I wanted to see. And this is what I want to be. So yeah, if you're going in with, you know, self-defense, like I'm, I'm trying to protect my money, I'm trying to protect my brokenness, then you're all you're you're divorced before you get divorced. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so Damn. I do understand that mindset, right? So mm -hmm. more so fear-based versus faith-based. Yeah. Right. Versus you know, negative potential negative outcome versus uh you know, uh more than likely positive outcome yeah but what about the guy who's looking at this thing just like he would evaluate different businesses right mm -hmm. and he's just checking out the pros and the cons statistics statistics <laughs> yeah. and he's just like based on statistics based on what's actually happening in the marketplace the relationship marketplace yeah this is a failing business model yeah i'm not scared because i believe it's possible yeah you know it maybe but, but statistically based this is not a good business model what, what do you say to that person if you're leading with the statistic business model of a marriage then you're calling it a business and when you're uh, when you're taking your lenses and approaching it like that we talked about broken lenses today then you're already making marriage something that is destined to fail like if you're not coming into this with a self-sacrificial heart that says i'm coming into this to break so that i can lead and be everything that god wants me to be in this marriage you're over there trying to evaluate so you can win you're getting every conversation trying to win, but you're not going there. How do, how can I be better? How can I break? How can I lose? <laughs> I want, I want to lose so this can win. I got to die to myself so this can live. So a person with a business mind is just like, where's the profit? Where's the benefit? How could I save myself? How can I protect myself? How can I protect my assets? Bro, you lost. You, you killed the marriage because you want to live. The Bible talks about uh, those that want to save their lives will lose it. And those that want to lose their lives will gain it. And in the same way, those that are trying to protect themselves in a marriage, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to protect my money. I'm going to protect my heart. You've already lost before you got in it because marriage is a game where you got to lose to win. And it's almost to the degree where you have to identify to piggyback on that, what the benefit actually you are identifying. We're talking mm. about benefits of marriage. So you got to look at what do you classify as a benefit? Am I looking for someone who benefits my specific lifestyle? Am I looking for a trophy or am I looking for a wife? Because there are two different benefits to each. Yeah. So my greatest benefit is having a family to cover and to lead and to make sure that I am protecting and providing for. So that's, that's the greatest benefit for me. Now that doesn't always set you up to have the ideal situation where everything is going your way. So it's almost like you got to identify first what your benefits are. Like if you are looking for someone, because nobody has ever done anything great by judging statistics, Right. Like if we talk about statistics, yeah, Albert Einstein would have never gotten to the light bulb because after statistical ideation, yeah. after try 100, I just need to stop. Yeah. Right. But 900 more tries, we got light. Mm -hmm. right. So it's almost as if, OK, if I'm going to judge it based on what the, st the statistics are culturally, one, so what are my benefits? Where's my value based? Because for us, it's kingdom. So I know that I was created for relationship. So if that if I know that that's a, a, a major part of who I am, then in order for me to be a whole man, I need that missing piece. 
right? So I think you, you first got to identify what your benefits are, because I think a lot of men are, are not looking for wives. They are looking for someone who fits the mold to make them feel better about themselves. Mm -hmm. So if that's your benefit, you're already setting it up to lose mm -hmm. because culture says that the benefit is you're supposed to get with somebody who makes you feel good about yourself, who's going to stroke your ego, who's going to support every business venture, who's not who's not going to tell you no, you know, that this whole community where it's, you know, you need somebody who is pretty much come in and subservient and we value submission over everything, not knowing that submission goes both ways. So yeah. how do I get to a place where I first identify that my benefit is not not in getting my way, mm -hmm. but having healthy relationship and and us being able to build something of value that we can pass down generational love and peace and freedom to our children. That's so good. if if I'm not looking through the correct lens of what the benefit is, then of course I'm gonna look at it and say, okay, well, <laughs> if I'm looking for a woman that's just gonna come in and cook and clean and do what I say, I don't want a wife. Because that's that's not the role of a wife. A, a role of a wife is supposed to help me meet the the ideas that God has in store for my life. And to help me meet that may mean she needs to challenge me mm -hmm. on certain thought processes or perspectives. And so it's it's just I think we, we first got to outline what what do you identify as a benefit? Mm, okay. Because what you identify will determine what you're seeking after. That's good. So, OK, yeah, that is good. That is good. Well, and. This is the thing. I think a lot of people are confused about what the benefit of a wife is. Yeah. And um, because it just doesn't look sexy, mm. especially when the the experienced brothers talk about it. It's like all this pain and hardship. <laughs> and it's like, damn, yeah. I'm just I'm here for the family photos and the good and the, and the good stuff, the Thanksgiving <laughs> and the Christmases. But isn't that the beauty? Isn't that like when you see a built chisel body? A man that has gone through that work, a man that has endured that level of resistance is able to achieve the beauty. Any man that has made millions has to, can't tell you that it was easy. It was yeah. the process that yeah. he can he can stand on. So why is it that men are looking for the easy way out when it comes to women? To be mm. honest, I don't think a man would truly be happy with a woman that he can literally treat like an object, like a dog, like men, they say, like, I want a woman, a woman that's an asset. Basically, they want a woman that doesn't interrupt their single life, mm. that their single mentality. They want a woman that's just an add on, not a woman that disturbs their their flow. And I think it is it's weak minded. I think because it's the easy way out. Like, why? how could you have built a six pack and still have the mindset that I want this to be easy? And you go into this situation with this feminized mindset that says, I want to receive, I want to receive. No, man, we come to serve. We come to give. Mm. Why, when you look at marriage, you're not like, I want to be a husband. I want to lead my children. It's, I want to receive a woman. I want to receive. <laughs> like, chill out, dog. Like, you're going to build like when it comes to when anybody that's built a business from the ground up, you give, you know, that business, like what y'all doing? I know exactly what you, you mean. You, you put your hands, you know, the cores. I seen y'all work in the cores, even though you guys are the stars of the show. In a sense, you guys know the cores, you yeah. guys going through, you guys working and troubleshooting and you have the resistance and endurance and the patience because you thought this business was worth you putting your hands on and enduring, enduring the hardships, the, the uncertainty, the difficulty. And so, yes, that feels unsexy, but the beauty is on the other side of the unsexy part of the patience, of the endurance, of the the trials and the journey. And I think we have to begin to start, like my brother said, without broken lenses, take the broken lenses off and value the process and the beauty of the muck because the beauty is on the other side of what we think is sticky and what we think is unsexy, I think. Mm, yeah. Yeah. And it's it's. I think so much in, especially in social media in this this digital age, we magnify the negative negativity or the negative aspects mm -hmm. of things because if all we're hearing is stuff about that's unsexy, we it's a whole lot of happily married people. Absolutely, but that's not sexy for what's marketable now. What's marketable is, you know, I was in a marriage and it sucked and and this is painful and, you know, stay where you are. And and because everything is is, is self-centered, mm. because now this puts the focus back on me. OK, yeah, no, don't don't get in a marriage because you won't be able to have your identity and you won't be able to do the things that you want to do and you won't be able to create the things that you want to create. Well, if the only thing that you want to create is for you, you're selfish to begin with. 
I want to create something I can leave. Legacy is something that I leave behind. But I need to be able to build with someone to establish a family to leave it to somebody. So and if you're still selfish, don't get married. If you don't want to let go of these selfish men, men or women, I don't care. Don't get married. Marry, marriage is not for selfish people. Yeah. It's for people are, that are willing to drop themselves for the sake of the unit. Yeah. I want I want to drop a poll on that because one one, I want to get an idea. Because the thing is. The show is for the fellas. Uh -huh. Yeah, teaching the you know the husbands is teaching the single men some game. Yes, so I want to drop a poll specifically for the men only. It's gonna give me a good idea because we got eight hundred people in the chat. Uh -huh. It's gonna give me a good idea how many men are actually in here. Yeah, and I'm gonna ask the men, men only. Okay, do you consider marriage to be an attractive relationship arrangement status? Yeah, well, whatever, whatever you want to. Yeah, consider. arrangement is fine. Arrangement, cool. Yeah, arrangement, and good. I'm just gonna put simply and tell me what you think about this tie. Yes or no? Um, put on the fence. On the fence. Put on the fence in there. Uh, okay. okay. I want to see the brothers the that might get converted this show. Yeah. Come on. Some brothers <laughs> might get converted this show, and some brothers might say, "I ain't. I'm selfish. I ain't signed up can, for that." Can we deal with the elephant in the room though? What's yeah, that? yeah, yeah. I think what seems the most unsexy for at the at on the surface level. Ladies, is, don't do this poll, ladies. <laughs> but go ahead. That's right. Yeah, we want real stats. It's right. the uh, idea that you got to commit to the, especially men that are experienced, men that have options. Having to commit to the same woman, we are predisposed mm. in our our carnality, and I would just say at the the lowest parts of us that we want variety, right? We want multiple women. We want to be able to experience the world. We want thirty one flavors. That's an ice cream company that we used to have in L.A. Um, so we want to experience all of those things because we think that there is joy. We think there's satisfaction in trying everything. And it's funny, men, you know, once they turn fifty and sixty, they're like, you know what? I done tried it all. I'm ready to settle on down because we realized that we could not find what we were looking for in that variety. And I realized more men have the patience to go night after night, year after year, body after body, dealing and experiencing all the spirits and all the skeletons and all the bodies of these women than having to deal day by day building the same woman. There's a there's a difference between having sex with a body and having sex and intimacy with a whole person yeah. and having a, a union. There's nothing like making love with the person that you built with, disagreed with, loved on, shared experiences with. Y'all holding hands. There's certain things, and we don't have to get to that. There's certain things you wouldn't do with a random person. Right. Sure, but sure there's not. another Shouldn't level of... <laughs> Right. Some people, they, they, they some like, some people be wild, right. <laughs> but there's a different level of openness and intimacy that you can have that you can only experience with someone that you're with day in and day, day out. And I think more men are afraid of of dealing and building in that way than they are with dealing with strength. Imagine more men are open to being naked and having one time experiences with strangers a thousand times than having beautiful more beautiful experiences with one person a thousand times and i will say this this whole idea of you know sex and what all that stuff sex is better when you get practice like the, the the smartest people the people that are best are experts because they've done the same like kobe bryant imagine he was great because he shot the ball the same ball on the same court five hundred thousand times that made him and made him an expert so take that and apply it to sex Two people that have committed to learning each other and becoming experts at each other's bodies, mm -hmm. they can become experts and mastery at pleasures for e pleasure for each other. So what you would have experienced and you thought that was an amazing experience with this random, you could have that times 100 with a person that has practiced you like Kobe. And that's a, hopefully if they were having a level of intention and not just going through the motion. Oh, right. yeah, yeah. Two, that's yeah. intention on you and yeah. on that person. Yes. Be careful who you choose, I would say. Yes. And then you be a, an intentional person as well. Yeah. I, don't yeah. don't just expect it and not contribute in that way. You know, one, yeah. one thing I, I do like that you said, and I think it's very important because if we're talking to single brothers, I think a big part of, you know, um, the mindset of being single and especially in our culture is that readiness point. I think everybody is you know, playing with that. Even the ladies, like mm. even everybody's getting married later. That's just what's happening now as, as mm. a culture, right? But I like what you said. You said, I didn't wait till I was ready. I knew and understood the purpose of marriage. Sir. So what is the purpose of marriage? Oh, you want to get deep. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Talk, talk, talk to my <laughs> brothers. Break that down I, for I'm us. not going to go all the way far, but this is it's a spiritual thing. I, we believe God instituted marriage. Go back, Going back to Genesis, marriage is the uh, reflection of the highest 
peak of a relationship that God desired to have with man. And we believe that in the end, we will be reunited in a form of marriage uh, with our Lord and Savior. And so I will say this, when two people come together, it's, a, it's called a mystery, a beautiful mystery, where two different individuals come together and become one, where they actually relinquish themselves for the unit of oneness. That oneness is a is a glory that the world begins to look at and says, wow, I can appreciate the fullness of God because I'm able to experience and see the reflection of the, 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 the beauty that God desires to have with us in that example of a man and a woman coming together. And also family being the foundation of community, family being the foundation of the church literally is the backbone of society. What do you, why do you think that we have the sexy reds and everything falling down, fall, falling apart in our community because there is a breakdown of the family. There's a breakdown of marriage. There's a breakdown of the role of a father and the role of a mother. And so when we when we value the importance of that picture for society, then we're committed mm -hmm. to actually building up society. I believe that my marriage does something for the men that look at me. Mm -hmm. I yeah. believe that my marriage does something for my son. It does something for my daughters and everyone around them. Yeah. And if everyone had a commitment to our community in the same way, I think we would have more thriving communities and less of what we don't want to see out here. Yeah. You know, that's the, and that, that's the thing too. That's why the, the video that we talked about that, that, that we just started to show with, it was so, it's so dangerous. Mm. And anybody that is an advocate of divorce or singleness is so dangerous because marriage is the foundation. Family is the foundation of the community. So if somebody is promoting anything at scale imagine at scale people ha people having a mindset that you should not get married that you should not build family what chaos is that nation right so that in itself that is demonic yeah. right it's it's no peace in that mm -hmm. it's chaos yeah so like that that's why we, we really do have to make a very intentional effort not to only you know, teach the purpose, but also somebody culturally has to make this look sexy, like culturally. Yeah. Because culturally we have made singleness, we have made selfishness, yeah. we have made individualism yes, all sexy. We have mm -hmm. made that cool. Wow. Very much so. And that's very dangerous yes. to to do as a culture. Yes, yeah. Sir. So let me give you a huge benefit for marriage. If we're trying to outline benefits, one of the greatest things that I've found in marriage to be a benefit is safety. Wow. Because even though what we're talking about where men can give themselves to multiple women, you only give a fraction of yourself because you know you're not safe. Dang. So in marriage, when you've come together and you have somebody who's committed to you, Imagine being in the place where you don't have to look over your shoulder, where I don't have to wonder if you're talking to somebody else, where I don't wonder if you if you if you're doing something behind my back when you are emotionally safe as a man. And, I, and I'm talking as a man who spent the majority of his life not feeling emotionally safe in all re relationships, whether it be friendships, whether it be in business, whether it be in relationships, I became a master, which I think a lot of men are. I became a master at giving people what they wanted without giving them me. Wow. Mm. So I can be functional in the area of giving you exactly what you need, but I wasn't safe enough to give you me, the real me, the raw me, the vulnerable me. And when you are in a marriage where you find that person where you can be safe with, Jeez. where you can mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually be able to release in a safe place, because the truth of the matter is in culture today, we have created a space where because men, we are not wired emotionally. And a lot of men which are wounded now, which it sounds like the gentleman in the video, is we do this thing where we expose ourselves vulnerably uh, vulnerably once, mm -hmm. right? And so one time we expose ourselves and we experience a level of brokenness. Yeah. What the tendency is from a man then to do is to say, I'll never do that again. Yes, sir. I'll never do it again yep. because it hurt once, so I'll never do that again. And what does that do? I've insulated myself within the wounds of my trauma. And now I've created an institution in my mind that I am not safe with women. So mm -hmm. what I'll do is I'll protect my safety by making sure that I don't allow people access 
to the vulnerable spaces that I that I possess. But when you get in a marriage with someone who is invested in you, I'll tell you, one of the conversations that that really was pivotal for me and my wife, um, I am an alpha male, right? I do, I'll, I'll carry all the bags. I want to, I got it all, right? I'm the king of, I got it. And one time I was carrying all the bags. I had food and she was like, you know, let me help you. And I said, no, 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 I got it. You know, I'm cool. I got it. I'm carrying all the bags and she tries to help, offer me assistance again. Yeah. I'm holding, I said, I got it, I got it, I'm good. I'm a man, I got it. I'm walking and I drop the food. Mm. She turns to me, she puts her hand on my chest and says, let me be your teammate. And for me, that was so transformational because I remember so many times where people became okay with what I could do for them and not being intentional about what, well, listen, what can I do for you as well? Mm. And when you find that place in a marriage where you are safe, where I can just be the real raw me and I don't have to uh, hold these walls up because what we classify as strength is really us hiding. Come on, bro. I'm hiding behind the walls of my trauma. I'm hiding behind whatever is going to protect me and insulate me so that I don't get hurt. It really is a form of where I just don't want to get hurt. So let me let me mask my strength over top of my trauma or my wounds. Mm -hmm. So just I prevent myself from getting hurt again. But when you get into a marriage and you are able to be safe. I'm telling you, bro, that is transformational. <laughs> Emotional safety for a man, crazy, is a game changer. Hold on, wait, 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 because this brother's going in. Yeah. I want to just let everybody know right now that we're thirty minutes in. Actually, uh -oh. about thirty-six minutes in. So the members only chat. If you're not an initiate, the chat is only for the initiate. So come on in, join the conversation, join the family, join the initiation happening here with these amazing brothers. And um, also, we already got well over a thousand people in. Only 298 likes. Please, guys, smash that gray like button. That's what's going to send this thing around the space of YouTube. And y'all see what's going around here. We need messages like this spreading and running and winging high yeah. right online on these algorithms. So hit that like button for me right now. And Ryan, close that poll out because the brothers went ahead and voted in here. Those are big facts, man. Over a thousand people in the room. The super chats is coming in, by the way. Men only. Do you consider marriage? to be an attractive relationship arrangement. We got over 120 votes and that's 70% of men say yes. Wow. So to kind of give wow. you an idea, 120 is, is okay, is okay. Cause usually I would say, depends on him in, in the room, we'll probably get about a third of the people that's in the room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we probably got around a third of people usually vote. Man. Probably around 250 or so, men, right? Yeah. Probably in the chat. So mm -hmm. that's okay. So 15% okay. yeah. no, and uh, about the other 15 on the fence. Well, actually, 17% on the fence. Yeah. So we got some brothers that might need to hear something yeah. to <laughs> switch things around. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, y'all talking heavy right now because when we talked about benefits, you know, I'm, I'm going to keep it real. You said you want to lead, you specifically, you said you just want to lead the family, you want to lead the household, which is beautiful, but. Some brothers probably thought that sounds more of a responsibility than a benefit. Yeah. Now, what I'll say is when you just broke down this emotional safety, come on, this emotional uh, vulnerability, th th this place where we can kind of let the walls down a little bit. Yeah. Now, I think you start saying, brother, oh, okay, okay, <laughs> oh, oh, okay, that's one. Yeah, right, that's, right, one. Right, that's one right, tally one. markup. <laughs> we got one tally markup right now. And see, I think another key thing we got to actually find because you, first of all, the way that's your current wife that did that yeah she's like oh my gosh yeah shout out to you right <laughs> because that was done so well yeah not just because uh, because obviously we highlight the fact that she did that mm -hmm. but fellas got to understand this too because i think a lot of guys might be in situations where they're with women who don't know how to create that safety yeah, yeah. right because there's different ways to handle that same situation mm -hmm. there's a way where you could do that and instead of a woman might you know seeing that he's Although he, it, it is that's pride mm -hmm. there. Absolutely, it's it's that that's beautiful. It's you wanting to be a man, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But instead, uh, somebody might easily jump in and say, "See that? You always want to blase block you." Somebody you might let get, me help you. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. see, that's anti creating that space. Mm -hmm. That's anti now want to talk to you. That's anti now want to open up. Yeah. So, 
how is it our job to cultivate this emotionally safe space or is it our job to feel around to see if it's space to see if it is safe for us mm. so and i want you to jump in on this bro i believe that you can't actually seek out a place of safety until you yourself have identified three aspects of one where am i how did i get here and where am i headed i, I say that because one of the foundational core duties of a man is to secure vision right as visionaries we're talking about you know i just want to lead the family a man is at his best when he's in a place of leadership when he's thriving in that space but in terms of emotional safety when you are trying to feel around in the place and you don't have a clear understanding of what you are looking for then you open yourself up to people who are not qualified to fit that space mm. So if I if my if my radius is vast and I'm just looking for whoever may try to throw their hat in the ring, then my probability of me getting hurt is high. But if I stop first and I say, OK, before I start looking and before I start exposing myself, let me figure out where am I? Where am I as a man? What what has contributed or attributed to me getting here? What are the things mm. that I'm susceptible to? What are the things that I'm carrying? What are my likes? What are my dislikes? What are my negotiables, my non-negotiables? And when I have that, it narrows my focus. So now when I start exposing myself, it's more meticulous. And I think sometimes because we haven't stopped and done that inner work mm. and we're just opening ourselves up to just random people then the people who would never even qualify for that space when they do damage, then we apply that damage or that wound to the whole pursuit. Mm. So now it's not even about this person hurt me. It was the fact that I opened myself up. So until I outline exactly where I am, how did I get here? What are some things that I'm susceptible to? Because I had to also learn the things that were my hot button issues. I had to learn what are some of my propensities. I had to realize that there are certain things that I'm more prone to do, things that are uh, triggers for me. I had to identify that in, in that space. And then I also, one of the key things that you have to do as a man, I believe, is to have the vision as to where you are headed. Because if I understand where I'm headed, then I won't just try to staff my life for now. I would try to staff my life for next. Yeah. So now I'm not just getting with somebody because of how you make me feel now. Mm -hmm. My focus is, can you can you come alongside me now? Mm -hmm. But also, are you qualified to journey into next with me? Mm -hmm. So then it's a very narrow focus. And so then I'm not just reaching random. I have a specific focus. Like a person, we're going back to the idea of a guy who is uh, consistent about his fitness journey, right? You right. guys are in shape. You're right. particular about what you eat. You don't just go to any restaurant. You don't just stop at anything because you have a focus mm. of what I want my body to look like, how I want my life to be, how the, the, how I want to feel, how I want to look on camera. You have a focus. Now apply that same focus in a relationship. Okay, I know where I'm headed. I know what I'm building. I know who I am. I know who God created me to be. So now I have a complete focus as to where I am. So I can't just go anywhere. Right. Mm -hmm. I can't expose myself to just anybody yeah. because then if I do that, if it literally wastes all my progress, what yeah. does it look like to spend six, seven months working on, on your body, building this physique that you desire? Then all of a sudden you just stop one day and say, okay, I'm done. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just start eating anything. Mm -hmm. You just wasted all of the progress. Come on, right. bro. But it's having that, that, that linear focus, that narrow focus to say, okay, what am I looking for? Where am I? How did I get here? Where am I headed? Because then that helps me narrow it down because then I can start the process of elimination to even exposing myself. Mm -hmm. But if I'm just exposing myself to multiple people just because you cute or because you got a nice shape or because we had a nice vibe and I don't know where I'm headed because I think a lot of men suffer from the fact or the lack of vision. Mm -hmm. I don't know where I'm going. So I'm open to wherever may the, the, the road may lead. I'm letting life lead versus my focus and my vision lead. And when that happens, that's when it's dangerous because I'm just, hey, this feels good for the moment because I'm not even thinking about next. Mm. I'm just here right now. 
And if you only focus on now, you will risk next for pleasure in the moment. And then you'll look up and say, okay, well, that didn't work. So I'm never going to do that again. And this is this vicious cycle. Man, I love a framework, man. (laughs) (laughs) I love a framework. So it's about the brothers need to assess where they are, Mm -hmm. how they got here, Mm -hmm. and where they're going. Yep. Now, I love a framework too, because the I mean, we use frameworks to build businesses. You could build relationships, it just helps you could build on top of the frameworks. Now, but when I'm hearing that one, that actually sounds like more of a prerequisite, yeah, as well. Yeah, because I know we 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 like to say it, but because I don't really believe all the way that you can't be ready for marriage. Okay. Now I'm not saying there is this ultimate readiness right, for marriage, right. but I do believe that there are some prerequisites. <laughs> mentally <laughs> prepare. You can mentally yeah, prepare yeah, for it. Yeah. Absolutely. Because you mentioned a single, the single mindset. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And I will say, I want to add on to something that he said with that that beautiful picture of her putting her hand on your chest and saying, Let me be your teammate. And I think sometimes as men, we want to be Superman. We want to perform for our women. So mm-hmm. we want our women to see us like every man needs a Lois Lane. So this is what I mean. Like Lois Lane loved Superman, but when she discovered that he was Clark, she was like, oh, okay, you're okay. I like Clark too. Mm-hmm. And so here's the thing. My wife loved me and helped and encouraged and poured into me at my weakest. And I think we're not able to discover that unless we're willing to lead in vulnerability. And that's why you can't, like you said, you can't be vulnerable with everyone. And I think that's why building friendships from the beginning is really important. I think if we get into the habit of, hey, can I build a, a safe friendship with this person? We go in wrong, like, all right, panties. Like, no, like <laughs> scale all the way back. Like, can we be friends? Can we have good conversation? And as I open up and then I show you parts of me, my weakest parts, how do you respond to the weakest parts of me? How do you respond? How do you deal with Clark? I want to know how you deal with Clark because everybody celebrates Superman. Everybody loves when I show my powers and I flex my strength. But what do you do with Clark? Nobody knows Clark. Nobody knows his difficulties, his challenges, his geeky quirks and all of that. How do you deal with Clark? I remember the time when I was running our tour 2017. I lost. I blew um, over six um, six figures in a, in a day. Whoa. In a day. And I came home. I I blew that money plus all of our personal money, savings and everything. And I came home and I told my wife, I was like, this is what happened. And she looked at me. She was like, okay, well, we're going to work and we're going to make the next move. It's cool. And to this day, she hasn't brought that moment up. What? Bro, I'm a Nigerian. Nigerian, we like to provide for (laughs) our women. We like to provide. So that was a moment where she had, I actually gave her a permission slip to rip me to shreds, to show me. You should have listened to me. You know, I, I told, told you to be more careful. All that she just said, I know what's in you. Let's just figure it out. And I was just like, so that's what you do with the weakest parts of me? Mm. She, I, done turned, I turned into Superman after them. All right, we're going we gonna to do whatever we got to do. All right, now I got somebody that, that saw my weakest and saw me from me. And after I come down the high of the stage and I, 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 out of the lights, she looked at me. No, my call me by my first name. She said, "We're gonna we're gonna rock this out." And so I don't think a lot of men have an opportunity to see that first because you know they jump into bed too quick. They never expose. Like it's so funny. We'll we'll, we'll give a woman a naked body before we give her a naked heart. And so I. Uh, Oftentimes, yeah, friendship is something that we we put on the back burner, and oftentimes we never get to build a friendship because we're just physical, physical, physical. So start with friendship, build that up, and allow yourself to get to a place where you can share some of the vulnerable places, the Clark, the quirks, the the, the weird parts, the weak parts, the parts that you need to grow in, and see what she do, does with the Clark. And with that, you can use to assess to say, wow, if this is what she does with Clark, Man, I know she got Superman. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Superman. It, Superman is easy. Everybody can handle Superman. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, y'all got some wives on y'all. Cause I'm yeah, I'm hearing, I'm hearing these oh, stories. Yeah. That's a hell of a test to pass right That's there. My because homie. I'm talking about blowing over a hundred grand in a day. Oh, yeah. And one th- man, somebody not coming back. I told you so is just oof. That's easy. See, notice, notice, ladies, that he brought up and my fellas on here. That she never brought it up again. Yeah. Because that's, man. That's huge. Talk about pet peeve. Bro. And she got the license. She got the license too. She could not be like, yeah, you. you I mean, that's, that was, I mean, yeah, that was a moment. (laughs) 
<laughs> you messed that one up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, but listen, yeah. first of all, the family is showing in here love. Yo, right. it's, it's really Call, going we crazy gotta right shot, now. We got to shout the family out Well, right this now. thing, first off, we've had over 15 people to join the Harley Initiated family already. Already? So, yeah, incredible. This, yeah, this is incredible. Yeah. Plus, special shout out, though. Special shout out to my girl, Yali, and Get Rachel Ray, and the Silver Fox. We got the fellas. The Silver, Silver Fox, Fox is in the building. <laughs> dropping bottles. We got to get a sound for that. We got to get a sound <laughs> for when the initiates is dropping bottles and helping other initiates, uh, future initiates, get into the family, which is crazy. So all yeah. together, that's like 30 plus people already added to the fam. So I know we're going to be over 700 by the end of the I night. I love it. We got the Super Chats coming in too, which I want to talk about. Shout out to Sterling Hopkins as well. Sterling, I've never seen you in the live chat. Sterling, listen, Sterling supports the program, by the wow. way. Yeah. He's always showing love. But to, to see him in the live chat is big. So that's how I know the, the live is going crazy. But I got a question for you guys. So we talk about intimacy just a little bit. Yeah. Before we dive in too deep, because I think we're ready to take some calls in a second, right? Yeah, we are. So we had a super chat come on uh, for SBU. Shout out to SB, uh, SBU. SBU Live. This we was had a her great on the show. question. And the thing is, she was on the show. And y'all got to watch that. We had 50-year-olds teach single ladies the game legendary show <laughs> legendary show legendary over 130,000 views already wow. yeah and within a matter of a few weeks so it's that's incredible and um she asks as this of both y'all by the way because i don't know who wants to go first on this right. yeah this is a good one but as men of god mm. capitalize men of god <laughs> 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 what is your stance on premarital arrangements was it premarital pre 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 no premarital agreements yeah okay. does that mean does that mean prenuptial I don't, I don't know, and y'all, y'all can educate us. Well, because when I read it, actually, I read it quickly. No, it says premarital. You're right. It says premarital agreements. It's premarital agreements. Is that a prenuptial? Or is that agreeing to having sex prior? No, can no, we no. Let's, 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 let's assume prenuptial. Okay, okay. okay. Let's okay. assume prenuptial. Let's yeah. start there. Yeah, you want, to, you want to take that? One? Yeah. So Say for, God made attorneys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So for me, right, I feel like that I'm not knocking people who do prenuptials. However, I do think that when you go in with the mentality of I need to protect my exit, then you are subconsciously putting yourself in a space where that's an option, right? So if I have to go in and protect my money from you, then I really don't trust you completely. Mm -hmm. If if I got to go in and I'm thinking that there's there might be a day where we're going to get a divorce then let me go ahead and establish this now. Subconsciously, I left that door open. Mm. So now it's one of those things that if ever there's a money issue, it's going to be a heightened thing to where I have to make sure that I'm protecting my investment my over my relationship. Mm. So that's that's my stance because I feel like if anything, you're going in hedging your bets on the possibility then what you're doing is subconsciously creating the possibility. Mm. And we don't accept that situation in any other scenario. Imagine a woman that says, I want to protect my future. So let me holler at this guy that I, I, has been trying to get at me and you'll be my plan B. So I'm just making an agreement with you. Yeah. <laughs> if things don't work out with my husband and you're single, Let's just pinky promise that we got this thing and we protect each other for each other. So if anything happens, we already know the deal. Would you would would any man be comfortable acknowledging that type of agreement? No, that's wilding. It's the same mindset. You're going in planting a seed and recognize man seeds, bro. So like is but is there an exception for my brothers who have a level of wealth that they've already established Do without you without any without any involvement of that woman yeah, relation. do you think is that a, uh, an exception or do you think that he still should walk in not even planning for an exit thinking about it and just walk in and you know have that level of exposure there in the way he sees it right of his assets if it were to fail what, what's your thoughts on that for that brother in particular keep in mind this brother this we talking about one two percent may at most top ten percent brothers but still yeah. What do you think about that? And, and let's just acknowledge that not all men have equal, not all created equal. So we don't all right. have the same equal level of discernment, equal level of opportunities. We don't all meet the same people. Yeah. Right. So some men could genuinely make a mistake. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? So I feel like the, it's, it's, it's twofold. I think the difficulty for the man 
oftentimes who's amassed wealth and success has become insulated in what's best for him. Right. So it, it, while it may be a good business move to protect your wealth, right? It's right. A, it, it makes sense from a business perspective. A lot of times when men reach a certain level of success, a wife becomes an accessory and not a necessity. Come on, bro. Wow. So now I just need somebody just to be here to rub my back and not because I really don't need you. Talk. Right. So if you're dispensable and you're no, you're not a necessity to me, then of course I'm going to protect what I value most. It, it, it really just proves your value system because here's, here's the real truth in essence. If I am choosing someone on the basis of what fulfills my desire and not my destiny, then I'm already setting myself up for failure because if I'm only choosing you, I'm successful and all I need is somebody to rub my back or make me feel good or, you know, whatever the case may be then I'm not choosing a wife. So then I'm entering into an agreement with someone who's not qualified for this position. I'm choosing someone just because of how you make me feel. That's not my, that's not a wife. Mm. So if I'm going to marry somebody and enter into a, a legally binding agreement that you are my wife, then I need to be careful about how I choose a wife. And the problem is that men reach success and all they think about now is what makes me feel good mm. because now I'm successful. Mm. So now I can be focused on me Yeah. when in all actuality, the more success you, you actually uh, accumulate, it should become very hard for you to connect with people because now I need a specific woman mm. that if I've amassed, if I'm in the top 1%, then the woman I look for has to be super strategic. She has to be able to meet the, the needs that I have mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, be able to steward. If I'm a successful man in top 1%, I'm not looking for somebody who's sexy. I'm looking for a good steward. Because your job is to come in and we are going to grow and steward this together. So I'm not just looking for someone who, who looks good and makes me feel good. Can you come beside me and help me steward this 1%? Mm. Can you come beside me and help us grow this even more? Can you come beside me and give me the safe place that I need to create, to give me the safe place that I need to develop and step fully into my purpose? Because success financially, I hate to break it to you, it's not your purpose. Well, you being su successful financially, you can have all the money in the world. It's a lot, I know a lot of very, very wealthy, miserable people. Come on. So I think that when you go in and if, if you reach that place of success, there needs to be a level of intentionality now of how am I securing a mate? Because if I'm just looking at an, an accessory, someone that just looks good. I'm looking for a trophy and I'm not looking for a wife, but I put a trophy in a wife's position. Then I'm jeopardizing everything that I've built. So if you just, if you build success, I think that that needs to narrow your focus. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's beyond, it's beyond beauty. It's beyond, you know, what you look like or how you make me feel or the, you know, the, the, the tangible aspects It's how can you, can you help me maintain peace of mind? Can you help me to cultivate vision for the next? Because if, if the real truth is this, if I've amassed this great sense of wealth, right? And it somehow just doesn't work. I didn't lose the essence of me that created the wealth in the first place. Talk. Mm. So if I, if I was able to build it and establish it and create it, and for some reason, if I chose incorrectly, or if this just didn't work or something happened and, and this happened and now I have to pay it, I didn't lose me talk. So if I created it once I can create it again, I can, I can reproduce it all over again. Right. But am I getting tied to the money? Is, is, is this what I'm really married to? And I just want you to be almost, uh, I'm making my wife, my side chick to the my greater money. commitment is to the money. Yeah. I'm because that's what happens is I want to make my wife, my side chick to my money. <laughs> and so mm. then it's, it's okay. I, I don't look at you in the proper light. Dang. I just need you to come here and make me feel good. I need you to, I need you, even though you have the title of a wife, I need you to fulfill side chick duties. 
Mm. Because my money, my business, that's my wife. That's what I'm married to. Would y'all be okay if a Talk woman heavy. if a woman had a prenuptial agreement on her mind to protect her wealth getting into relationship with y'all? <laughs> I thought they already did that. I thought they already keep yeah. one in the side pocket, the back pocket. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hear that, that yeah, advice. No, I mean, that's just what you know. I don't know who's teaching what around here, <laughs> but I do think women do do that naturally. Do they not? I mean, we have to ask women, do they not keep these I mean, other all, available options in the back of their mind or in some reachable place in case you fall off? I mean, I mean, is that not like natural to survival? You're talking about just particular, a dude in particular. I'm just saying, saying a, a, a general. I'm, listen, I'm, only asking, women, I'm, not making, women. I'm not accusing nobody. Matter yeah. of fact, I'm going to drop a poll on that. Yeah. No, it's you know, Even, cause, cause, no, I'm not saying they're not fully committed. I'm not saying they cheated. I'm not saying they flirting with the dude. They're keeping in contact with the dude. I'm just saying, realistically, does the average woman have one secret two, stash. a secret stash mm. of guy that she can go back to in case things don't work out? That I think, is I, destructive. I think, she, I, think she, <laughs> I, I, I think she only has that if she really don't like... I mean, I really do think that if a woman is truly all in, like you really have her mind and her heart, like she's not going to have the capacity for another man. See, I'm not saying that. No, but see, I, but, no, but that's what I'm saying. I think when when those side options start happening, because we hear about it, like we had Dr. Tart on here. He said typically uh, about, I think he said the statistics goes that a woman starts making planning for the exit three years prior to a divorce happening. So if she's no longer being fulfilled or served in a marriage, then all of a sudden you're right. Like this, this space, this room, for these other things, this exit strategy, this new man, this new job, these new bank accounts, all this space Dang. is going to be able to be there. Dang. But when you are fully occupying mm. her in that way, when she's like fully being served mm. and she has no hunger for nothing, I don't, I, I, I don't think that woman is going to be doing that unless she... My, like my man, uh, Dr. Darius Daniels said, he said, if your woman leaves, it's better be because she greedy and not because she needy. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But that's a good poll. And it's funny because I, you know, I had another, we got to drop some polls tonight because I want to talk to the people. As a matter of fact, here's what we're going to do because we're getting ready for the initiation hotline and I didn't get your take on that one too. Uh, I want to get your take on this prenuptial agreement. Uh, <laughs> but here's what we're going to do. Ryan, I actually want to go ahead and allow us to get the initiation hotline link in. Fellas, here's who I want to talk to tonight. I want to talk to my single brothers that are vetting out some women. My, my single brothers, especially, please let me get one of these brothers on the fence. I want a brother who got some questions, who's finding them a wife, vetting one up, or about to. And I want to get you up here. I want to get, really talk to my brothers up here. So we're going to drop the link. We're going to pin that, um, that link up here. So we can get that. So be patient with us. As a matter of fact, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and drop that joint inside the chat right now. And my brothers, just so everybody know, when you come backstage, put your name down. When you come backstage and once you get in there, I'm going to go ahead and make sure you got some good light, y'all. Make sure you got some good light. Your camera's on, your audio's on, and you're in a nice, quiet environment because we're going to bring you on. We're going to talk to you in front of the family. And I really want to chop it up my fellas tonight out here looking for some wives. All right? <laughs> And big shout out to my man, man, big shout out. We got the brothers are really showing up heavy tonight. Shout out to Carlton Cardi Jr. Not only did he join the membership, but he said as a single man currently working to become the best version of myself and my future family, I want to thank you guys for the thought provoking content. I mean, yes, that's brother. a huge, huge for lo you, lot man. of love. And shout out to Larry Love Jr. as well. And Lydia Weir and Kat Harlan, which all seem to be agreeing with this gentleman that you guys are dropping some gems tonight. So right. that's good. I dropped this poll, by the way, too, because we got to get some answers. It's for the right? ladies. <laughs> and listen, and this is the thing. So, because the ladies be upset with me sometimes. Oh. They be like, Ryan, you such a jerk. <laughs> oh, no. How you going to say that? <laughs> and the truth is, I'm only an investigative journalist, okay? <laughs> I just truly want to find out the truth. You want the answer. That's, that's it. That's it. So, ladies only, the scenario, ladies, you're in a committed relationship. This is a scenario. Whatever you define as committed is a committed relationship, okay? Do you still keep other options if things don't work out? These are options I laid out for them. A flat out, oh, no, no. I got yes, but I don't keep contact. 
Because <laughs> that, <laughs> that may be an option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got no, and I got depends on how long we've been together. I meant to put an absolute yes. So you can just, so if it's an absolute yes, which the ladies, maybe, maybe I don't know. You can drop that in the chat. But I want ladies to answer that question. Right now, we got 150 votes. 84% of the ladies are saying no. But the ones that are being honest, they're saying yes, but I don't keep contact. <laughs> <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. Y'all laughing. They scared. They gonna say they why I was making hard. <laughs> no. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna speak to this. Is is one thing that me and my wife did? We literally sat down and went through the list of people that we were connected to, and just start blocking people. Yeah. Yeah. I like that exercise. We literally just went through, hey, who who are you talking to? Or is it somebody that you flirted with? Or, you know, somebody that I had history with? We just going through, we just blocking people. There's no yeah. conversation. Need. It's because what happens is, is as long as people have access, they will lurk. Yeah. They will lurk. You know, and, we, and yeah. then they'll just slide in and send, you know, they'll do little subtle stuff hey, like, like your pictures. And <laughs> well, they won't even go as much as doing no. that. They'll like your pictures yeah. of subtle. you and your wife. Ooh. Right. So they'll they'll be strategic in how they are presenting Savages. themselves. Savagery. Right. Because I don't want to appear a threat. Like it's it's the game. Dang. So what happens is is that if you aren't in the space where you are cutting off access because access is the enemy to progress mm -hmm. as long as i have a door open a crack uh, i tell people you know all the time i am a crack filler i'm always looking for cracks mm -hmm. because if you catch it as a crack it's not a canyon mm -hmm. so but you know and uh, jumping on there but what do you think about in terms of access like people having access to you Ooh, you gotta shut down the access. i love the block block ministry man we are about the block ministry but i think it's also about open communication that also deals with the cracks because if these the secret stash is in the back of the mind mm. it's in the deepest parts of the heart so to know that there are doubts those things need to be laid out. If I have doubts about you in a relationship, there are some issues or I'm unsatisfied here or there. Those things need to be conversations because if they're thoughts, then the thoughts are the doorways. I don't need to have contact with somebody. But if I have doubts about my wife, I'm having feelings and voids in my relationship. That is the doorway. That is the gateway <laughs> to problems happening. That's so good. yeah, yeah, yeah. So good. we about to get it popping right now because we, we got the popping. initiation hotline getting going. Hey, we right. these brothers. So I got one in here right now. Let me bring one. <laughs> let me bring one up here right now. We got my brother Mark in this joint here. Oh, we got the fellas calling in. Mark yes, is uh, on this joint. He's in here right now. What's popping, Mark? What's good, Mark? What's going on? I ain't think I'll be the first one. Hey, you the listen, one. You surprise, the one. Surprise, surprise, my brother. Surprise, if you can, surprise. Mark, go ahead and give me your age, your location, and your question, brother. Uh, age 38, location, Albany, Georgia. And my question is, uh, pretty much, I mean, you guys pretty much kind of answered the questions already uh, for me because right now, you know, I really, I recently rededicated my life to Christ and get myself as far as really locked in uh, as far as on my journey. What would you say are some good qualities for a man who's really locked in and has found his purpose in the traits that he's looking for for a future wife so uh traits in her or traits in you well tra traits in her because okay. i say that because i've i'm in therapy so i've identified a lot of past trauma within myself that my dad passed along to me Love so that. i've i've actually now identified what my issues are so it helps me to when I come across somebody because I used to be a broken man, I can see the brokenness in people. Mm. So it helps me to kind of vet them. But when it comes down to the wife aspect, what are some of those things that you would say as far as like what or the man who's in that search we should be looking for? Man, that's good. I think in general, like my brother already said. That selflessness is really, really key. A woman that is coming into the situation, not saying, what can I get from this? What does he bring to the table? But rather, how can I serve this man? The reason why that is, is, is a great thing is because you, in your journey, have the same mindset, hopefully. How can I serve? How can I contribute? And when both people come into a situation, it's like beautiful love making. When both people come together saying, how can I make this the best experience of her life? Mm -hmm. And she comes and says, how can I 
like make it the best experience of his life, you guys are going to have beautiful intimacy. So I think that is kind of the foundation for having two individuals that are ready to make things work, that uh, selflessness, that uh, humility and understanding, I think is really, really key. Yeah. I, I would just add to that. I totally 100% agree with that. I, I always say that how a woman relates to God will determine how she relates to you. If you are in the space of you are a faith filled believer, how she relates to God says a lot with her ability. If she can't love God, if she can't be sacrificial when it comes to God, if she is not a giver for the one who is the giver of life, mm -hmm. then I can't necessarily expect her to come and put me in the place. And honestly, I don't want to be in that place because then I become her God. So then once I'm elevated above God, then now God has to now, because he's jealous for us, I will have no other God before me. Things will go haywire. So I always look for how a woman actually relates to God, says a lot about how she will relate to you because there's so much that, that, we find our identity truthfully when we lock in with God for real. So if she's locked in with him, then she's on this journey of self-discovery. She's in a space where if God can correct her, if God is helping guide her thoughts, then she's already in the place where she wants to be the best version of herself. So I always look for that. Like for someone, how they relate to God determines how they will relate to you. Let me add, add to that. Yeah. Also, and this is why long distance relationships are tough, observe how they relate in community yeah. with their family. One of the biggest things for me was my wife, her brother was hungry at the job. And then she was, I was like, what are you doing? She was like, I'm making him a sandwich. Sandwich. I was like, but he works like out of the city. She was like, yeah, I'm gonna drive the sandwich to him. I said, you're gonna make a sandwich for your brother and drive it to him? I was like, okay, say less. Because uh -huh. if the only dynamic you experience with this woman is y'all in a chat and y'all in romance, is y'all in a candlelit dinner, then you only have a one facet experience which does not expose her true character and so observe good. her in community. See how she treats her brother, her sister, her mama, her daddy, and then you'll get insight into the type of person, the quality of woman she is. That's good. Yo, first That's off, Mark is in here in the chat taking notes. Like, I'm, oh, yo, I'm, I'm looking on video. Y'all see this brother wow. on video hey. taking notes right That's now. I, I looked at time. I'm like, bro. That's so, lit. so ladies, like, it's really, it's really brothers out here studying to become a husband. That's well, I mean, because is, is, is that not what it takes? That's what's yes. up. That's what's up. You, no, I yeah. mean, you got to be a lifelong learner. I mean, yeah. it's you never arrive, even when you get married. I'm always constantly learning my wife Jeez. because we are going to evolve. Yeah. And whenever you stop learning, that's when you start dying. Oh, no, but he's serious. He's gonna, he, he gonna oh, yeah. lock up with a woman real quick. Oh, oh yeah. I can tell. Oh, yeah, yeah. I can tell. Gonna yeah. Lock in. And then, and then it's, it's funny just because, um, Especially when you said as far as like how she relates to God, uh, I'm not going to take it too much of your time, but it's tough in this dating world because ever since I literally rededicated my life to God, I've come across women and I'm honest with them and I'll tell them that, you know, premarital sex is out the window and it's cast for the ghost. They disappear. Whoa. Whoa with the ladies. The ladies. The one Ladies, bro, I am I'm shocked. A, I'll hook you up, dog. Come on now. That's wild. The ladies. Lady, la wow. Ladies, I'm disgusted. I'm disgusted <laughs> with y'all doing my brother. Hey, Mark hit, that, like hit, this. That, hit that ski heat on him, bro. <laughs> Come on. Uh, man. That's wild. That's, that's excellent, man. You you filtering them out the right way. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Wow. Man, all my life right now is is work. Go to I go to church, go to work, come home, go to the gym. And as soon as I get off uh with y'all, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish up. The rest of the broadcast, I'm in college courses right now. So that's, I have a yeah. set program. Right. Hey, Mark, listen, Let's go, Mark. listen, much love to you. I appreciate you coming up here and chopping it oh. up with us. And Mark, As, wait, 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 we got to invite Mark to come back and we need to figure out what's going on. Like, what's the next step? I want to hear about that. Hold on, wait, Mark, you an initiate? I'm about to join. I'm about to join y'all. First of all, you, you please yes. join. And, yes. and any updates on the journey, info yes, at hardlyinitiated.com. And call in Let again. Let us know about because it. Yeah. we want to keep up with, with the story, what's going on with you. Okay, brother? Yes, sir. Hey, I appreciate it. Much love, brother. Shout out to Mark. Shout hey. out to Ty, too, who just dropped another five bottles. <laughs> who was that? That's Ty. That's Ty dropped that. That's crazy. Ty. What's up, Ty? Yo, so first off, this is really crazy because we we already amassed 50 new initiates tonight. Yeah. Which is incredible. incredible. I think the highest that we ever done was like 30. Yeah. 
And yeah. based on what's happening right now, it's possible we may hit a hundred new it's members. Awesome. Right. I would love that. And let, yeah. let, me, let me tell you, I want everybody to know too, because I want to bring my fellas up tonight. My fellas, I want y'all to join the video chat. I'm gonna let the ladies come in soon, but I'm prioritizing this for the fellas. I got and y'all gotta have your cameras on when you come back here before I let you up backstage. So please, if you come back here, turn it on. And I need these likes to come in here because y'all see what's happening. The brothers are showing yes. up. Ladies are saying that it's not a lot of men out here wanting to, you know, it's these men don't exist. Blah blah blah. You see a brother right, right here with here. pen and pad out. He ready. So that's not true. You just in not school, looking in the right place. Grinding oh, in church. They, Staining. Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Stella P yeah. and Ginger Snaps, all the elite initiates. Shout out to Ripside too. Ripside and, and Josh. Shout out to Ripside and Josh Bunny. But Ripside, we're gonna get into that because uh we're gonna get into your question in a second. We ready to take another call? Because if not, I got a question. No, we got to take the questions. I don't, I don't listen. I need, I'm, I'm okay. holding it for my brothers. Brothers come up in here. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead and get it right. I need brothers that's looking and looking for my wives to come up in here and chop it up with us tonight. But go ahead. Okay. So first thing I'm, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and close out this poll. It was a ladies only scenario, hypothetical. You're in a committed relationship. Do you still keep other options if it doesn't work out? 80% of the ladies said no. So that's okay. that's cool, y'all cool. Yeah, that's okay. cool. All right, cool. Yeah, we not right. we're gonna, good, good, <laughs> good. Okay. Now the thing is, you got some ladies in here says it depends on how long, and you got some ladies in here that says yes, but I don't keep contact. So I'm gonna just ask you guys. This is for men and women, mm -hmm. men and women. Would you advise if I mean, is that is it a good idea that if you're just recently getting into a committed relationship? Maybe it's somebody that you really have feelings for, but you you just uncertain if they're going to go as hard as you. <laughs> is it OK to maybe, you know, keep somebody kind of in mind, even if it's just for the temporary, the first couple of months? Or should you just as soon as the commitment is laid down, you just go crazy, you go all in? So in the discovery process of dating, I think we have perverted the idea of dating. Dating shouldn't be like the smash uh, galore and the mural of our lives. Like literally, you're getting to know a person. So if you're saying in the discovery process, is your mind open in the discovery process? I think part of the discovery process, there should be openness in your mindset. But when there's a decision for commitment and there is a, a determination that I want to journey with this person, I think that that mind of openness should, should close out. But I think in the discovery process, that's why I say friendship is important. Friendship it's, is important. It's important to just lock in and say, hey, yeah, there's a traction there, but I know the purpose and where I'm going. And so let's let's make sure that I protect your assignment and I'm protecting mine, meaning I'm not going to give you my body. I'm not going to mess this thing up because I know your wife is not going to appreciate the fact that you have this body in your memory. Yeah. And so I'm going to make sure that we protect each other, each other's assignments while we learn each other. And I'm going to drop, this is going to be a shameless plug. I, I created these game cards and they're cards for people that are single or in dating yeah. relationships to get, to ask the hard questions on the front end, a lot of times when you date, it's almost like, let's have this dinner and let's eat steak and let's just like, oh, tell each other how cute we are and stuff like that. No, nah, ask them like, how do you feel about prenuptial agreements? Yeah. <laughs> like, right. what would your ex say was your worst trait? What was the, last, what was the reason why y'all you, you, broke up? Oh, okay. Do you have any past trauma? Okay. How do you? You, you still talk to your dad or your mom? Oh, there's still issues? Okay, why haven't you forgiven her? It's like stuff like that. It's like, okay, it's, it sounds crazy, but it's not so that you could be in their business, but it's so that you can see what their core values are. Yeah. Because you might get to the first date and realize, oh, you hate kids. Mm, oh. We may not be able to work. Yeah. Oh, you don't value marriage in the way that I do. Oh, we, we got two dates in. We're not wasting each other's time. We get so caught up in the romancy, your cue, candlelit dinners and steaks that we forget we're actually in the discovery process to actually determine if this person is going to be a lifelong partner with me. And so that discovery process, that friendship building process should be really intentional and it doesn't involve need to involve bodies. Yeah. Ooh. So we got to talk about that in a second. And uh, Tasha, let me know. You just let me know when you're bringing up somebody because I kind of want to keep this rolling. Keep flowing. I'll let you know. Because, okay, so you mentioned the friendship piece. And as I'm thinking about it, I'm like, okay, well, that sounds good. Like, I want to get to know a woman. I want to be a friend. But when I think about it, I don't I don't have any, because this is current, I don't have any strong female friendships, like, whatsoever. <laughs> like, none. In fact, right. when I think about it, I'm like, how the hell do I even be a friend to a woman? That's a great. I love. Mm. How, I love that you asked well, that. Well, and, and, and just to be clear, 
platonic friend Plat- or you, you're talking about like nah that you're not that you're not that you're growing to have a relationship with or what do you mean well that's what i i mean i i don't know because i think it, it's I'm different. trying to figure that it's out different. it's very yeah. very different because growing up growing a, a friendship out. with a woman that becomes intimate and growing a platonic friendship i think those are very different relationships. well if it's platonic i mean how much investing are you doing so i guess it's right. somebody a woman that i care about yeah. okay that i may not be ready to commit. date or commit to but I still want to let her know I have this level of interest, but I'm doing X, Y, Z to be able to soon come. Right. We kind of do our thing. Or even if it's, it's just very early, I know I'm 20 years old, 25 years yeah. old. And right. hey, I want to build these relationships as I get to know myself. And then when I come around to it, I want to be able to have these ladies that I could potentially date seriously to have these redeemable qualities, you know, yeah. so to speak. So how how do I befriend a woman and how do I Let's see maintain that. a friendship? So I, I think you said a couple of things. Okay. Sometimes what guys do is they stockpile potential. Mm-hmm. So I'll have a list of running potential mates, but still take the freedom to do whatever I want to do until I am ready. Right. Right. When I think every direction must have a level of intentionality. If my goal is to build something with you, then I need to start building an intentional friendship that should lead to dating, that should lead to a commitment. But I think we couple dating and commitment in the same category. That if we're dating, that means I'm committed to you. When the act of dating is we are going out on dates Mm -hmm. until there is a level of communication. But I think a lot of times where we fail is communicating in the stages is because she can think that you all are in a committed monogamous relationship, but the guy could think, oh, we just kicking it. And then it's the whole, now when things come out and it's come to light is, well, why were you out with her? And you're like, well, you're not my girlfriend. Well, we've been in this place where we've been dating for six months, but it's not the intentional communication to say, hey, you know, I'm an express and be communicative about my intentions. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think sometimes where men falter. So if you are in a space where you're saying, I see something that may be potential here, I think as a man, you have to have the tendency to commit to a direction and not be omnidirectional, <laughs> right? So if, if I see something here and I wanna explore it, let me go in that direction. Not necessarily, I see something that I wanna explore, let me just, Let me give you enough to keep you close enough so while I'm over here panning the room that when I circle all the way back around that you're still available. So if I see something here, there's nothing wrong with saying, I see something, let me explore it. Let me date, let's communicate. Hey, you know, I I, I find you attractive. Let's go on a few dates, let's get to know each other. We're not in a relationship, right? But let's date, let's get to know each other and then see how it evolves. And if you get to that place where it doesn't work, just be, communicate that. Hey, I don't, I don't think this is working for us. You know, matter of fact, you know, I think that maybe we should, we'd be better off friends X, Y, and Z. But when there's no communication mm-hmm. and then, and a, as a naturally how women are wired and they start to invest emotionally, and then you become one with this person subconsciously, then when you try to deviate from that direction, it it translates as heartbreak because we're on two separate pages. Mm. So then it's okay, if I see something here as a friend and I wanna develop it, go in that direction versus saying, okay, I see something in you, I see something in you, I see something in you, I see something in you. Let me just have y'all all over here until I hit a place where I feel like I'm ready to go down this road. Mm. Because then what happens is, is that if you have this potential list and none of these people are for you, then what we are doing is keeping these women from the people they're supposed to be with. Well, well, talk heavy. So then that relational blood is on my hands. Wow. I never heard that. Because I'm holding you captive Mm. to an idea that I may never pursue. Mm. Mm. So if I, if, Hey, if I'm not going, if we're not going to try it, then you go do your thing. I go do my thing. And if we're going to circle back and it somehow aligns back in another time, then that's cool. Mm. But not, not just, Hey, yeah, I think you're cute. And I'm going to keep you close enough. Man. So 
Man, hold on. So, first of all, yeah, I could tell y'all did something because now all of a sudden the brothers want to get on now. So let's yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. And let's the go super chats is going crazy. Yo, the initiates is really showing out tonight. They show, like, y'all like, showing out, man. We love y'all, yeah. man. It's beautiful. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and bring my first brother up. I got Mark My Words coming up to the stage here. What's up, my brother? How you living, man? What's up? What's up, Tyshawn? What's up, Ryan? Yes, Mark, what's, what's, up? Up? Oh. what's up? Listen, yo, first of all, let, let's start with this. I want to change this up a little bit. What's your relationship status, brother? Uh, I'm uh, with somebody. Wait, 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 Whoa, hold on <laughs> now. Hold <laughs> on well, no. now. It was a lot of confusion there just like, now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fake well, call. Don't now. get that man in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was about to say. Well, well, well I want to get into that in a little bit, but uh, age and location as well. So uh, 46 years old from Harrisburg, okay. Pennsylvania. Got it. What, what what was that kind of pause a little bit? Was is is, is it fresh? Did it just happen? Well, no, no, no. I didn't. I didn't know if I was supposed to say dating in a relationship. Uh, you know, so everybody okay. categorized that differently. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I get that. <laughs> well, what's your what, what's your question, my brother? So I wanted to ask the brother. So great content tonight, fellas. Um, you're giving out a lot of good info for us. And um, so if you are a religious person and the person that you're dating seriously is not, do you feel like they have to become? You know. On, do they have to get to your level, you know, spiritually for you to move forward with them on a serious level? Or is that a good idea to do? Or if they're not, should you be kind of somewhat trying to encourage them to do so? Man, that's a great question. So I, I think it's a little bit nuanced when you say if you're a religious person, there are people that say I'm a Christian. But if I were to ask a person, let's say specifically in the Christian religion, are you a disciple of Jesus Christ? Mm. That's a very specific mm. question. That means right. I follow the teachings of Jesus. I am subject to the authority of scripture. I live my life according to Christian principles. That's a totally different thing. Yeah. And if that's right. the case, mm. if you have a life that is submitted and surrendered to Jesus Christ as a Christian, and there is an individual that does not value the principles, the teachings, the, the standard of Jesus Christ, then you are asking and inviting problems. Why? Because like my brother said, if you're going in a particular direction, you want to meet with someone who wants to go in that same direction. There are going to be some core issues that you guys are going to clash on and go in different directions when it comes to raising kids, when it comes to the way you value marriage, when it comes to the way that you value and deal with relationships, when it comes to submitting and even attending church, yeah. some, the way you handle money, all of those things are governed by scriptural doctrine. And if somebody says, well, I don't care what Jesus said, I'm going to deal with my money like this. And you're like, well, yeah. I do what the scripture says. Then you have a foundational problem. So I think it it's really about assessing where you are. Are you a disciple of Jesus Christ. If you're a person that just goes to church and you're like, I want somebody to come every Sunday and that person commits to coming to church on Sunday, I think then you guys might <laughs> might be on the same page. But if you're someone who is founded and you're anchored and you're, you subject yourself under a doctrine and things like that, then you want to be with someone who is submitted with a life like that. Like my brother said, her relationship with God, if you have a relationship with God, it should be somewhat aligned. It does not mean that she has to know everything that you know, and you guys have to be on the same exact level. You just guys got to be on the same direction yeah. so that you can build together. Go ahead, bro. No, I was going to, the Bible says, how can two walk together? Let's stay agree. Come on. Right. So if, uh, to my brother's point, if I am a disciple and I'm pursuing discipleship, if we are, cannot agree on the fundamental basis of our belief, right? Like, do I believe that Jesus was born, that he died, that he raised with all power in his hand? Do I believe that he is the, the foundational core of my life? If I am believing there and we're both striving in the right direction, we can be on two levels of understanding and expertise as long as we're traveling in the same direction. Right. Mm -hmm. But if I am saying that I am trying to live a life that's pleasing to God and you're saying, uh, I mean, it's all right, but uh, I'm not really pressed about it. Then what's going to happen is scripture also said bad company corrupts good morals, good character. So then my zeal to pursue God is going to lessen. And then now I'm going to be in a place where I start compromising my spiritual stance to accommodate the foundational belief of this relationship. So if we are not headed in the right direction, we can be on two levels of expertise, just like the natural analogies. If you are in a different physical place, if you're more in shape or she's more in shape, 
but you are desiring to head in a place where you both are healthy, where you can live a, a life of longevity, then you head it in that right direction. But you start to clash when I'm pursuing Christ and you're not. So I think that's where we got to you, you got to identify what do we believe? Do can we agree on the foundational aspects of our belief and are we headed in the right sure. direction? Because if we're yeah. not the it it doesn't matter how much that I necessarily want to be as long as I'm connected to someone who has no desire to move then what happens is my relationship turns into me dragging dead weight which then ultimately will lead me to a place where I start to lose zeal because I'm tired and I hit this place of emotional and spiritual fatigue and instead of cutting the cord the tendency is I'll just stop because I'm tired of dragging the weight and then we'll be comfortable not pursuing Christ together. Ooh. Mark, thank you so much for coming up here. Fantastic question, my brother. <laughs> I appreciate I, and I, listen, I appreciate the strong brothers coming up here tonight and actually chopping it up with the family. So much love to you, Mark. I see you in the chat. Oh, yeah. Listen, HI, the niche is being represented well tonight. No, nah, represented so well, respect, man. Sure. Much love, man. Thank you so much, brother. Okay. I appreciate y'all for having me. Absolutely. Bye. Absolutely. And here's one. I'm gonna I'm gonna get one more good brother up here. I, hey, also all men to, tonight. Oh, it's men. Yeah, all yeah, men tonight. Let's, let's go. go. We chopping it up with the brothers tonight. Let's man. go. <laughs> Listen, ladies, ladies, don't be mad. Hey, no, no. <laughs> this this was the, the, the ladies wanted it. They want to hear from the fellas. They want to hear from the fellas. Here yeah. you go. I got my brother Miguel coming up here. Miguel, what is popping, family? How you living, man? I'm good. You all hearing me? Yes, yes. Miguel. Okay, okay, just making sure. Oh, he got that accent. Wait, where you calling you in go. from, man? <laughs> yeah, I'm calling from Trinidad and Tobago, man. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm calling from Check it out. Help me out here, brother. How um, uh, how old are you, by the way? What's your relationship I'm, status? Right, I'm 29, and I am currently dating. Okay, okay so, so okay. you currently are you, are you are you eligible bachelor? Are you and you dating with intention for wife? Or yeah, you, absolutely, you absolutely. Money? No, no, no. Definitely intentional. Yeah, yeah, definitely, okay. definitely. So, so what's your question, my brother? My question is, how do you know what, yeah, how do you know the right time to be exclusive with the person that you dated? Mm. That's a good question. That is a good yeah. question. Yeah. And, and just curious, are you, are you currently dating a young lady and you're in that process where you're trying to figure out if you know, this is the right time for her? Actually, no, I, I just came out of, um, I was just dating a young lady. And what I what I tried to do this time, right? What I did was I went the route, Tyshawn, of saying, okay, we are attracted to each other. So let's just take it from there. Let's just acknowledge that we are attracted to each other. And let's 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 date with that. So it wasn't in the in the um the route of friendship. It was in the, the route of accepting that we hey we are attracted to each other. We are we already like each other based on how the conversation w was going and stuff like that. Okay. Right? You all understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So but but I recognized through that experience, well, it was a, it was a bad decision because <laughs> I recognized that we started to pretend there was a sort of pretense in terms of us. It, it was like if we were pretending we were in a relationship, but we weren't. It gave this imagery that we were because of that route. So I recognized that that, 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 was, that wasn't a good idea. So that's why I'm asking. Because you all mentioned before, um, uh, the the significance of the platonic relationship, right? Being platonic, but how do you know that it's the right time to be exclusive with that person? How do you know it's that? It's let's that get time? to that. I mean, that's a good question, Miguel. Yeah. So so let let's pop that off, fellas. How do mm -hmm. I know it's time to go from dating? You know, we we dating multiple people, but now it's time to shut it down and you leave know, all the other options in the past. Leave all the yeah. other options in the past. Yeah, I would say, I mean, just real, I'll let it uh, pass it to him. I think just even being practical, I think it's so easy to be drunk 
in the romance and we talked about the the, the yeah. physical aspect That's of it good. you get drunk in that i think being sober minded means like i said before having the difficult conversations first and i'm i could probably assume that a lot of the conversations that you had in the beginning while they may have been good conversations i'm not sure how intentional the conversations were meaning asking the questions that could break it this sounds really backwards or it sounds really harsh to say but ask the questions that have the potential to break the relationship if you guys aren't on the same page about mm. it. There are some core values that you hold true, especially if you're a believer or you have, you have strong core beliefs. And if you lay those things on the table, hey, this is what I believe about this. This is what I think is important. Have those conversations on the front end, sober-mindedly, and protect your heart in, in a sober-minded way to not allow yourself to get caught up in the lovey-dovey romancy, like literally in the same way you go to a job and you're getting, getting a job and you have an interview process, there is a bit of a process where you're literally, hey, just, hey, I just want to know the type of person you are, even to build a friendship with you. There's certain types of people that I rock with. Okay, you think Satan is cool on, on Wednesdays? <laughs> All right, I, we probably can't even be friends. Yeah. Like, so even there's a level of intimacy that comes with even building a sober friendship with an individual. And that comes from having conversations. And oftentimes, if you notice in our, our organic relationships, I don't even know how you guys began to have conversations and become friends, but those conversations usually happen years into the process organically. We have to start creating the culture of having those conversations intentionally at the front end because we don't we can't afford to wait for years into mm. it when she start liking you and y'all start building this emotional investment into the relationship so that's what i'll say <laughs> that's so good yeah. bro I, i'll break it down to an extremely practical level because i feel like that's such a meaty answer that you can take enough away and to dissect that but when to know when is the time to be exclusive if the idea of her going on a date with someone else well. starts to eat at your soul, then oh. it might be time for you to say, hey, let's try this exclusivity thing. Like, let's let's see where we are, because then there is something that's invested more than just casual dating, yeah. because if you leaving and me and my wife had this conversation when we were dating and because we were long distance, I was uh, in a different state in we were having the conversation because I was about to leave town and we asked each other, so what are we? Are we exclusive? Are you free to date other people? Am I free to date other people? And my whole demeanor changed <laughs> at, the thought at the thought of you going out on another date with somebody. Yeah. So let me be intentional about my investment and say, no, let's try it. Let's mm. try it. Let's 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 commit. Let's be exclusive because if not and I don't vocalize that and if it doesn't matter to you mm. or if you are in a state where you still want to explore your options, then that's not the time. But if you're in a state where you say, hey, the thought oh. of you going out with somebody else. Yeah, no, I think I'm going to go ahead and lock this down. <laughs> okay, okay. So I understand that. And uh, I want to – are we closing this one out? Because I got another question. Let's that's, close that's this one in out, the man. Same family. Miguel, first of all, thank you, brother, for coming up here and chopping up with us, yes, man. Sir. Much love to you, Miguel. And shout out uh, to Trevor. Thank you. Thank Potato, you. Man. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate you, man. Much so I got love. something similar. I, I think because people really want to know when to start and stop certain, you know, uh, aspects of the process of dating. OK, so shout out to Joy, Joy Sean. So she says she agrees that dating is discovery for both people. OK, and both people should remain open during the dating process. OK, so she's on the same page with that. But her question is before going to the commitment level, she thinks counseling sessions are mandatory. Do you guys agree with that? So she's pretty much so. Oh, he looked okay. Counseling with together. Yeah, before committing, saying, "Hey, it's me and you." Is that is that a little bit too much? Uh, so if she's saying <laughs> that before in the dating process, we should get a counselor for us. Like, I think that might be a little extreme because, like we said, it is an open discovery process. However, I think finding someone to to share and helping give you language for how you are and 
you know, the things that you've gone through. I don't think that's something that you have to do when you're in the fire. I don't think that's something you have to do when you get in a relationship. That's something that I would recommend everyone do now. Why you get mad? Why are you so bitter? Why are you, why are you jealous? Why do you still hate your sister or your brother? Why do you, why do you get so ticked off when this happens? These are things that you should know before you ever get into a relationship because it's bad stewardship to go mm. in with the shards of the broken shards of yourself that you're going to use to cause the person to bleed on when they're in a relationship with you. It's bad stewardship. You want them to, you want to be able to articulate why you do what you do, how, why you feel the way you feel so that when the person comes in, they can understand and know and have language also to interpret what's going on. So I think that's for an individual. I think individuals, once they get with someone in the commitment process, I think it's good to invite someone in that process. When you get married, premarital, get somebody in that process and somebody should, you should have somebody you can knock on their door while you're married too. But I think in the dating process mm. to bring somebody in, there is no union yet. There's no commitment yet. There's no decision yet in the dating process. So I think it might be overkill to invite someone in that. But as an individual, invite someone in to help you articulate what's going on with you for, for, for the sake of you. Mm. <laughs> That's that's, that's good counsel. Piece. That's huge. Now I want to. I just keep going this thing because yeah. I'm really, I'm really, I'm really moderating this thing. Well, right well, well, check, well, check it out. What I'm gonna do is I, I'm I'm gonna bring this brother. People been kind of playing around in the chat, but he finally came up in here, man. One of our legendary brothers up in here, Jonathan. <laughs> yeah, we're here giggling on here. Oh, I'm over here getting on you, Jonathan. What's up, brother? <laughs> hey, what's up, man? Can I hear me? Yeah, man. We can hear you, what's brother. Good, How you man? living, brother? I'm good, brother. It's good yeah, to see you, man. man. Jonathan, we, uh, listen, th this brother is in the chat regularly. One of the brothers. Definitely. I uh, hardly initiated. He probably was the know, first damn male initiate. Yeah, no, ever. listen, <laughs> listen we, we greatly appreciate your presence and, and the conversation you spark in here, keeping it respectful, you know, with the ladies. Um, John, but, uh, but now I'm, I'm, I'm going to get a chance to get to know you, brother. You single? Yes, I am. Okay, cool. You single? How old are you, brother? I'm 29. Okay, cool. 29 is the number tonight. You single and dating? No, not really dating. Um, just uh, focused on like what's what's my purpose fully, because uh, I just got my um, credentials um, certification to be a Christian life coach. So I know I'm meant for ministry. I know I am uh, meant for uh, so many things of purpose to help people. And so, um, but I do have this. I'm gonna be the, probably the most different man on here. The most different man. On here. <laughs> okay. Because I'm because I'm gonna let y'all in on a on a secret. Okay. What's up? So. I'm I'm disabled from the left side of my body. I have nerve damage, right? So if wow. you know putting myself out there, it is it is hard for me to put myself out there because um I'm not at a financial point of uh, to put myself out there to be out there. And I do see women that actually think I am attractive, that think um that say that they want me, but I know at the end of the day, um they will want my financial stability to be, to be a certain certain, uh, certain status. So um, as a man that is starting to even know his purpose even more and knows that he's meant for ministry and he knows that he's at a different of a, a different spiritual level um, than he was before because, uh, you know, is this, this, started, uh, this happened four years ago. And um, since then, um, I know God's put, put me in a season to prune and to uh, educate myself to be ready for when he puts me out there again. So, um, yeah, so I hear from you guys. Um, what can you guys tell me to help you for me? Wow. Well, let me ask you a question. You said the disability just happened four years ago? Yes, sir. Man, I just want to say, man, the transparency, bro, that you just came out and, and shared that with us, man, power to you. I'm so grateful that, you know, God, God himself helped you discover his purpose for your life. And I'm, I hear the strength in you and I pray that he continues to build you up already. I'm telling you from right, I haven't seen you yet, but you're, you're valuable, you're needed and your, your presence in the space that you're in, even with the situation that you're currently in is going to give you a unique voice and your voice matters and it needs to be heard. So I'm really, really grateful. And I can't wait to see what God does in your life, brother. No, Come on, bro. That's a fact, Jonathan. I did not. I yeah. listen. I see you in this chat all the time, and I did not know that about you. And the fact that you're here, you know, does let me know that you are working on yourself. Yeah. You know, like everybody else here. And as he's interested in in long term committed relationships as well. Exactly. Exactly. But go so, ahead, Will. Will. What you got so this is a, such a special place in my heart. You said it's your left side, right? Yeah. 
Okay. So in 2000, I had a sinus infection that spread to my brain that led to me having a stroke and I was completely paralyzed on the left side of my body. Um, I had two brain surgeries and doctors said that I would die or live in an unresponsive state for the rest of my life. So it's these moments that I understand the darkness that you face on a daily basis, having I had to learn how to do every bodily function over again. My my takeaway for you is to I think that like Ezekiel just did is you have to be intentional about pouring into you so that you don't identify yourself with your disability like that you are comfortable and confident in who you are and who God has called you to be. And knowing that as you continue to build and develop yourself, because as you present a confident version of yourself, regardless as to where you are, the person who's supposed to come alongside you to help you meet the needs and the destiny that you are going to accomplish is going to be tailor made for you. So it's, it's having the trust and the awareness that God knew that you would be here before you did and that he has a plan for this moment too. The thing that always blows my mind is God's foreknowledge, right? We live through, we as we travel through time, but God sits outside of time. He sees your end from your beginning and he's planned for every moment. So it's the trust in knowing that God has somebody specifically designed for you where you are to help you accomplish all the things that you're su uh, supposed to accomplish, but also knowing that you are not your disability, that you are who God called you to be, that you are a man of purpose, you're a man of, of incredible destiny, and that there is someone who's incredibly designed to help you meet that destiny. So take me as a living witness. I know what it's like to travel through that, but I also know what it's like to come on the other, out on the other side. And my prayer for you is that you do the same. Big facts. Yo, John, Good. listen, thank you so yeah. much for coming up here and introduce yourself. I don't know. It's good, this was, it's good to finally meet you it's, virtually, it's man. It's good to finally <laughs> put the words in the chat to, yeah. the, to the profile picture, to the face and the voice in real time. And I brought the right brothers up in here. So understand that this was divine, brother. It yeah. was. It's so interesting. Actually, this Sunday, we this dropped Sunday. an episode with the Clements. The Clements is actually an interable couple. Yeah. The couple, Mr. Clements, he's literally. He's like in, three feet. He's literally in a wheelchair. Yeah. Like mm. disabled. Oh, and the couple on uh, the, IG? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And they, his so, wife. So they, so they initially went viral for their wedding photos on IG. Oh. She's about five, three or so. He's about three feet. He's pretty much um, relegated to the actual chair. Yeah. So it's pretty much a part of his being now. Yeah. And they've been married for a few years. They just had a baby. You know, they moved across the world from he's the, a motivational from the UK. Speaker. He's a motivational speaker. Here. Yeah, he's a motivational speaker. She's a life coach. They met both pursuing their purpose. Uh. Strong man, beautiful couple, but they, man, bro, he, yo, let me they tell you, laid it out. Like that they, episode's coming this Sunday, and when I tell you, I have so much respect because, John, the way you're being tested right now, like, believe it or not, you're gonna be stronger than most men. Yeah, with all two feet walking. Don't confuse strength with legs and 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 mobility, brother. Yeah. Like what you, how you're being carved on the inside of you is going to be absolutely divine and just completely just stay steadfast focus in this in this season that you in of growth because i could see you locked in right now especially with you you clearly stating i'm not dating i'm locked in i'm focused on me that's okay that season is required and keep building just keep building yourself up we gonna keep building you up yeah. stay locked in with us we absolutely love you jonathan and I appreciate you for coming up here and telling us and chopping it up with us and being vulnerable with us in that way. And that's exactly what we represent. So I'm going to let you go, brother. That's good. All right, man. Thank you, man. Thank for you, guys. Sure. Appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. That was incredible. That was blessing, man. Absolutely, man. So when, when, I, when I hear stories like that and, and then I consider the things that we've been learning and the things that people share with us and kind of the transformation that's taking place, it really, really makes me feel good. Like, you I'm realize like, we're on mission right now. Yeah, right? Good. Mission. That's that's good. It's, that's big, good. it's so much bigger. Yeah, it's good. so much bigger, man. Yeah. So... That's so just cool. incredible. I, that, that, that you guys are doing good work. I'm going to have to dab y'all up. Y'all doing good that. work, man. I got to so so like like put some bombs on yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, you gotta yeah, get yeah. We got to get the sounds going. <laughs> Come yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we we'll, got, we'll get more of those. Up. And, and, but, but see, like this, when I see stuff like that, man, stuff like that is just absolute just confirmation. Yeah. You know, for all of us, including you, Jonathan. Like, it's just confirmation that 
you know, everybody's in the right place. Everybody's mm -hmm. walking perfectly in purpose when things like that happen. I don't, do not believe in coincidences yeah, yeah, at right. all. So right. big shout out to the initiates and everybody in here. And big shout out to y'all dropping this, this game. And I guess the people don't like it because we only got 754 likes and we got 1,500 people in here. Y'all keep <laughs> smashing this. The world needs to see this, y'all. Yeah, yeah. The world needs to see the brothers coming up in here. Y'all yeah. see the kind of... Yeah. Listen, first of all, let's just talk about this. Do y'all see the caliber of the brothers coming up here? Uh, like, I initiate... It's, it's not... When you see these brothers in the chat, these are not no low-level brothers. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies, I don't want to hear that whole ain't no good yeah, brothers out there. Right, yeah, here. yeah. Yeah. They're here. Yeah. They in matter of fact, they in the chat. Big shout out to us. So go ahead, hit that like yeah, button. Yeah, the chat is going crazy. Happening. Shout out to True Life. Shout out to Lady K's Kitchen. Shout out to Shy T for more gold bottles. Shout out to me and Million too, man. We're really going crazy. So this is the thing. We got a question, and Rip Siders are trying to get this question in. So we got to take care of <laughs> What's my that? folks. What's we got to take care of my folks. So we just need more detail on friends, okay? He or she says, I am older and childless. How loosely are we using the terms friends and do friends date? That, that's a great question. I, I'm, I'm going to let him run, run it. <laughs> then I'll, I'll yeah, what, what is a friend? You know, you got the, <laughs> the, the auntie, your great aunt. She got a friend. He's yeah. been around every now and then, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some of us single backers, we got the, yeah, the friends, friends, you know what I mean? And, Thanks. and you know, movie night, you know, whatever the situation is. So <laughs> you got so many different versions of friends. So what's yeah. a true friend mm. if you care about somebody mm. and, you know, you got real feelings for them? What does a true, being a true fan to them look like? And should you date if you're not really ready? So I think that there's levels to friendship, mm -hmm. right? And it's not one lump sum. It's not one size fits all. So let's start classifying it as, for the sake of this conversation, intentional friends, mm -hmm. right? So if if we are friends that have an attraction towards one another and we're just starting conversations, there's an intentionality there, right? If we're just friends and we're just going to be platonic, you know, and there is no romantic interest there, then that's just the baseline of friendship. But all of it starts when we start having conversations. So if you, you know, back in grade school when they would send a note, with, do you like me? Yes, no, check the box, mm -hmm. maybe so. <laughs> it's that it's the intentional conversation. So if you are going to be an intentional friend and it starts with, hey, I find you attractive. Do you find me attractive? Do you think that it's something here, you know, based on our energies, our likes, our dislikes? And we don't necessarily have to date right now, but it may be good to just start spending some more intentional time with one another. Mm. Because once you start putting intentionality around it, it change, changes the scope, right? Mm. So if, if we're going to be intentional, then what we do now is more intentional. It's now we're just going to just walk around the park and not have intentional conversations. Mm. We, we give it a direction. We give it a focus. So... If there's a desire there or an attraction there, start having that conversation, mm -hmm. you know, or, or you just run the risk of you may be feeling something and they may be completely unaware and you may be thinking that you're heading in a direction. So I think everything starts with an intentional conversation. An intentional friend is we are intentionally investing to try to see mm. if we need to move forward into the dating process. And intentionally uses, investing yes okay he uses the word intentional and i want to add on another word which is careful mm. i'm careful with this friend because i'm full of care for this friend yeah if i'm careless with this friend then that determines the way i deal with them then of course i would sleep with them of course i'd be mismanaged their heart because i care less about this friendship but if i'm careful i'm intentional then i'm careful about what i say to you what I do with you, what I don't do with you, how we have the conversations. I'm intentional because I want to make sure that I'm protecting myself, but good stewardship means I'm also protecting you yeah. from me. Mm. I don't, I don't want to violate this process because if your husband is not me, then I don't want to be a bad witness for this situation. I said this right. before, <laughs> when someone is done with me, or if I find someone we, we build and it doesn't work in the right direction, I want them to testify about me. I want them to say, man, that brother, he looked out for me. That brother, he was he was a good guy. You know what? It didn't work out with me, but sis, maybe you should talk to him. How come we leave a we leave a trail of blood? Mm. Our exes, everybody like, 
<laughs> don't talk to him. He going to do this. He going to dog you out. And he probably going to go. Like that is the testimony of people that have dealt with men of God. I'm still and waiting so on the test. The, 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 <laughs> I listen, I'm still waiting on that exclusive to drop on me. They trying to, they going to try to put me out. I already know. Oh, yeah. Let's the next we, we, like, we, you know, we got some pass. Yeah, we got some pass. We got to do better. We so got some we got to be careful about the friendship that we have. And so it's just like that intentionality. When I build with someone, I want to make sure that I'm leaving. It's like some little legacies. I'm leaving this legacy to know, hey, you dealt with a man of God. This is what it's like to deal with a solid brother, a man of God. And and can I, can I say, I think it will help us if we alleviate or remove the idea that it didn't work as a failure. Come on. Just because it didn't work doesn't make me a failure or that this failed. This just wasn't for me. And it's okay to change directions, to stop, to pivot, to come back and say, okay, this didn't work. I think we get so stuck up on the fact that because we have this over obsession with time that I have to get it right now. Mm -hmm. And if I don't get it right, then I failed. And now I don't have the necessary time. I've lost time. <laughs> and now I can't regain the time that I lost, even though God redeems the time. Mm. We get to the place where we say, okay, this didn't work. So then I carry the weight of failure, yeah. which then which then prevents me from showing up fully into the next moment, mm. right? It's having the, the, what I like to call the shooter's mentality. And I wrote about this, the arguably the greatest NBA shooter of all time is who? Steph Curry. Curry. Steph Curry. Right. Okay. Right. If y'all say anything else, I, <laughs> right now. I was about to say Ray Allen, but I forgot about yeah, Steph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> See, with this, Steph, Steph's still in the league too. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. <laughs> But I've seen Ray Allen, I mean, and he oh. got Ray Allen. I've seen <laughs> Steph come out and go three for 36 some nights. Mm. But the shooter's mentality is I keep shooting. I quickly move on from my last miss because I have the confidence that I'm going to make the next one. Yes. Right? What happens is we take a shot. We miss a shot. Then we stop and we start to bury ourselves under that last miss and then we stop shooting. Yep. Mm. So if I get to the place where I say, you know what? This didn't work out. Shoot or shoot. I got to jump back in the game. Mm. Yep. I got to get to the place where I'm saying, okay, that didn't work. That didn't mean that I'm not qualified or that I'm not destined to have what I want. I have to have the shooter's mentality. I missed that shot. Okay, let's shoot again. Mm. Because all I have to do is make one. Mm. that's all I have to do. Mm -hmm. But it's, we weigh it in the terms of that didn't work out. It failed. Let me stop shooting. Let me give up. Let me throw in the towel. And just because that didn't work, doesn't make it or make you a failure. Mm. Shoot or shoot. Bada boom, shoot bada bing. Shoot. shoot or shoot, baby. We got one more brother that we're going to give up. While we got the I'm initiation hotline too, going, we are going to go and ahead. I know when the hotline blinks. And there we go. Keep hitting that. Keep <laughs> hitting that, Lono. One more time, Lono. And get this brother in here. <laughs> I know when the hotline blinks. All right, we got Kyle on the stage, man. Kyle, what's going on, brother? How you living, brother? I'm good, man. How are you? I am blessed, Kyle. You single? I'm single, yes. Okay. Just out of something extremely toxic. <laughs> you just, you, so you, you're freshly single, newly single. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um. It was not purposed and ordered by God to begin with. I rejected the signs. I guess the one thing I kind of wanted to just speak on before getting into my question is what the other brother oh, was oh, saying. Oh, oh, oh. Before you get in that, what's your location and your age? Uh, I'm 33. I'm from Toronto. Okay. okay. 33. You in Toronto right now? Yes, sir. I love that. Bro, he sounds like that. Drake. Okay. Kind of look like Drake too, but look, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna get <laughs> just a little, just a little the way you know, you know. But anyway, <laughs> so so me, so, what was your question, brother? Um, I just wanted to piggyback off what the other brother was saying first, and it's kind of just in terms of what I'm going through myself. Is it's never a loss, but it's always a lesson, and. I think when you go through things, you really, you're really hard on yourself at times. You really look at things and you're constructive. And I think it's all about attitude in the right, in the just having context in the right way, um, one foot after the other. It's never about the, the 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 destination. It's about the journey. So things are gonna happen regardless. Um, 
in terms of, I guess, what I just wanted to ask is because of what I was actually getting out of, and I'm a man of God, um, that's first and foremost. Uh, we have to be accountable and reflect a character that allows us to be, we have to answer to something. And without having that narrow path, that guidance, that understanding of what being a man is and being a woman, because both are obviously character wise are listed in scripture. I guess going to my question, it's just, how do you navigate between the imperfections of a person? Because all of us are so imperfect and it's very subjective, of course, because one person may be for you, another person may not be for you. But how do you kind of navigate through the, the, the imperfections? Because it's always, it's, it's, it's step-based, right? Like you court, you are, sorry, you, you're a friend. I guess that's the topic of conversation today is, you know, friendship and this is my first time on the show, like just watching it all. So thank you for having me, by the way. Um, it's a good, it's a good episode, man. Um, yeah, hold on, wait, 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 wait. Let, let's scale it back. Let me get real clear. So yeah. pretty much, and 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 be brief and brilliant. Get, ask, ask your question for the people that just came in and want to know. Ask your question in one simple sentence for me. How do you navigate through the imperfections of a person or character traits that? Yes, it's very subjective based because everybody's different. But how do you find the middle ground in the different stages of whatever you're trying to find? Because it, you, there's imperfections at friendship. There's imperfections in courting. There's imperfections in being espoused. There's different imperfections in marriage. So how do you kind of navigate through all of that in a way where it's purposeful? It's, it, you know, you want it to fall on the right you want it to fall on the right soil as per scripture. You want to bear the best fruits, you know, of your labor. So how do you navigate through that? That's a good question, Kyle. I'm going to go ahead and get the, get the fellas on there now. Yeah. Uh, as a man of God, I would say this. I'm grateful you're a man of God because it's, it's difficult for me to share this outside of <laughs> talking to someone who's a man of God. But prayer, bro. The prayer that I prayed is slightly different. And I encourage everyone to pray this prayer. The prayer that I pray when I'm when I met my wife and I start to see, man, I don't see nothing wrong with this woman. I'm attracted to this woman and I'm ready to like make some work. I prayed this prayer. I said, God, I want to be aligned with what your heart is for me. Yeah. I want you to break this relationship up if this is out of line with what you have for me. Yes. I want you to cause me to not be at peace with making this decision moving forward. It's a, it's a radical dis, uh, prayer because it's saying, God, I desire your will above my own desires and God. Yeah. And that's a prayer that a God loves to answer. Yeah. And he will give you that answer and you will be at, 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 at chaos in your mind and in your heart. And you'll be unsettled when it goes, when it comes to moving forward with this person and God will reveal that to you. And like you said, you ignored all the red flags, you ignore all the signs and you continue to move forward. And God was potentially trying to communicate something in the midst of that chaos. It doesn't mean that you might not see some imperfections. Like you say, imperfection is not a reason to turn back around. But if you, if God has allowed you to be at peace with being good, being called to this woman and determining that this person is the one, then you'll be able to kind of say, hey, this is these are the raw materials that you've given me. God, I see them and I have a vision for this and I want to move forward with this. So I believe praying that prayer as a man of God is extremely helpful. Do you have anything to say? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I've prayed that prayer and I think that it's so pivotal because when you align with God's will for your life, that's when you tap into the perfect will. Right. Like mm. God has the, a permissive will, which he'll give you what you're asking for. Mm. But his perfect will is what he designed for you before the foundations of the earth. So in addition to seeing imperfections, I think that you got to be intentional about what you're actually seeking out, because if you're seeking out to find and highlight imperfections, you can run a tally list of why you shouldn't be with someone because you can start to become nitpicky. Mm -hmm. Everybody has imperfections. Yes. I think when you highlight your list of negotiables and non-negotiables, you know, things that, okay, if you prefer somebody with this, but it's not really a deal breaker, then, and your non-negotiables, which I won't bend on these, that will help you to start sort of filtering through the person that you're connected to. But if 
if you're searching for imperfections, you're going to create a space where you talk yourself out of anything because you can literally find reasons that, okay, well, you're doing this or you're not this or you're not this, you're not this, but it's now, okay, I bring my list of imperfections into the situation. You bring your list. How can we filter through and find the, the, the perfected parts of each other and do those mesh? Do, do do the great parts of you match with the great parts of me? It's in that puzzle piece. Am I? Can I find the pieces that I can say these pieces qualify to journey with me through time into my destiny, my purpose, into next? Because if I'm searching out imperfections, I'm looking for a reason to disqualify. Mm. But if I'm in a place where I say, okay, I'm trying to find reasons to build, then I'm looking for the the perfected parts of you. And even the areas of development or the things that you've developed and how do they correlate to to my areas of development? Because if you first start looking at your imperfections and start focusing in on first, what do I need to get better at and where am I developing? Then that will give you a course too, as to say, hey, this is the path I'm on. Mm-hmm. Are you willing to join on this path? Mm-hmm. Because I'm already in direction, like I'm already in motion. Right. I'm, I'm headed this way. It's 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 progress. So, you know, while we're developing with imperfections, it's can you come alongside the path that I'm on and our two paths join together, if that makes sense. Man, Man Kyle, yeah. first of all, thank yeah. you. For great oh. question, Kyle. Oh, facts. I appreciate this. Is, I don't be seeing you in the chat often. Are, are you are you new to this? Is, this is literally the first time I've ever watched. I just happened to come across on YouTube. Um, so like, this is just pretty insightful. Um, you know, just understanding older, older brothers, you know, people who believe in, in God, it's, it's something that captured me earlier at like the 25 minute mark. So I've been tuning in and I I definitely will. Um, I just, yeah, Kyle, listen, I need you to stay with us. Okay. I don't need you to go nowhere else. We're trying to have some representation in Toronto. We need the brothers. (laughs) We need the brothers in here too having conversation with us and join the family too right after this joint. But I, I, I want to get, I want to go about getting back to this conversation. So Kyle, yeah, I'm gonna let you go, but we'll got a message for you, okay? No, I'm just gonna say we're not that old, you know. <laughs> no, 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 you know it's just in here. <laughs> we're, we're, we're that old guy. But I will absolutely. You, Kyle, so Kyle much, much love, brother. Appreciate. It. This has to be one of the. I mean, this got to be one of the most epic nights. I'm not sure. Is it? Is it? Is it just the fellas? Let us know in the chat. Is it because we brought the strong men up? Because the love that's happening, I mean, y'all can't see it. It's really going oh, crazy. Wow. Like, I just insane. feel like it's love, it's connection, it's everything going in. The OG shout- Orlando came back? Yo, shout out for, first off, shout out to Gloria, who showed just showed some, some big love. And Orlando, the man just dropped 20 memberships. I mean, first of all, this Orlando thing, is an OG. 20. 20, this is the yeah. First off, Orlando is a benefactor. He He's is. a hard initiated benefactor. First <laughs> yeah, off, he is. But the if thing we got a is, wall of names, just know, brother, yes. you're gonna be on there. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know if people really know. Even the people who are gifting memberships, I don't even know if y'all understand the impact that y'all are having. Mm. Y'all like giving people permission to enter the community because there's a lot of people just waiting on the sidelines. They just waiting for that invite, mm. right? And the things that we're about to bring to the membership, they not only y'all going to be happy for, for inviting them, but they going to be happy and they going to have a community to be a part of and have people to take care of them. So this is just lit, man. That's amazing. It's crazy. Oh, it's, it's absolutely incredible. I love that we've been talking about this man dropped another 10. Oh my Listen, God. I love, I, yo, I love we, that tonight. Like, like a, our, yo, first of all, round of applause. Round of applause. Something. Round of applause. Something. We got the round of applause. Something. Drop the round of applause we gotta get some new sounds. It's going yeah. crazy. It's just epic stuff happening tonight. And see, I like that we're talking about the purpose of the purpose of dating tonight because this is so important, especially in our culture that I really think has perverted dating yeah. in many ways. So, for the men especially, right? And 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 when I say for the men especially, I mean we just kind of have free reign to really like you said, kind of get blood all over the place mm-hmm. in many ways. When incentivized, mm-hmm. you know, we high five, it is just what it is. It's mm-hmm. a part of it. What do you feel about the brother or brothers who just are in a space of casual dating? Mm-hmm. What's your thoughts on that? Because I noticed you've been using the word intentional the whole night. Mm-hmm. And in many ways, casual is damn near the opposite of mm-hmm. intentional. Mm-hmm. 
But I want to know your thoughts. I don't want to lead to the answer, but what's your thoughts on brothers that might be in the space of dating, but it is casual? Well, I, I think the space that that brother is in, I think when someone is meandering, right? Someone is wandering. That means that they don't have a direction. I don't want to demonize a man for being lost. I'd rather show him the way. And so we could <sighs> we could easily again. take time and bash an individual that doesn't have a working GPS system, or we could actually share our directions. And so for the man that is out there, that is literally what he's trying to do is he's trying to find himself. He is trying to wrap his mind around his destiny. And oftentimes men who have broken pieces of them, don't know who they are, don't know purpose, don't know the purpose for their own lives. So they dis, they, they devalue their lives and devalue the lives of the people around them. They do what they want with their bodies because they don't think their bodies are valuable. Mm -hmm. You know that some men don't believe that their own bodies are valuable. So they share their bodies with hundreds of women. God told me I'm expensive. And that was something that, that blew my mind. Men don't think that they're valuable enough. They're so cheap that they'll see a girl to be like, yeah, you, I, I'll take you right now. And he'll give his woman, his body to that woman for free. <laughs> like, you know, it, there's nothing, there's no exchange except for the fact that he just cast his body on a bed for a woman to have him. But this man is so broken that he's literally trying to find the most valuable aspect of himself in the in the, the most surface place that he could. And I think for that man, I want to remind him that he is more. Come on. I want to remind him that he is a son and he is valued and he has purpose. And when he recognizes that he has purpose, then he'll stand up and he'll treat his environment with purpose and he'll treat the people who come into his uh, radius with purpose. So a woman that comes in, if she's a sister, then I'm going to treat her like a sister. If she's a mother, then I'm going to treat her like a mother. If she's a potential wife, then I'm going to treat her like a potential wife. But until he gets to that place, then everyone that comes into his environment has the potential to be mishandled. Not just a, a woman that he casually dates, but the, the his friendships, his co-workers, and every other, his money, Everything gets mismanaged because somehow, some way, there are broken pieces of his identity that he's trying to use to try to fix, and he's placing wrong pieces of the puzzle into the wrong empty parts, and he's he's just lost and he's wandering. So it's safe to say you telling me that if a brother's casually dating, he's currently lost. After, well, when it, it, when when it comes to that aspect of building relationship, he does not know the purpose of relation that relationships in that way. If he's casually dating, then he's saying, "I'm searching." He's 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 searching. I want to figure something out. Otherwise, he's just saying, I want to fulfill something. But he's deluded. He's deluded into thinking that I'm fulfilling something. If I'm having sex with 100 women, then I'm thinking that I'm satisfying something. But if I was satisfying something, then it wouldn't take 100. It Damn. wouldn't. It, it's, so it's like if, wow. I, if you see me drink, if you, you see me drink 100 glasses of water, that tells you that 99 didn't satisfy me. Yeah. One, two, three, four, 99 just said I drank a hundred. That means there's something wrong with me somewhere. Something wrong with my inside. Something is not sending the right messages to my understanding. I'm thinking that I'm being satisfied and I got up to a hundred glasses of water and it's still not processing that it's doing what it needs to do. Is it the water that's not right or is it my body that's not communicating the right message to me? And there's something about the brokenness of a man when he deals with a woman after he's at his hundredth and three hundredth body. He's recognizing, man, I tried to fix this broken piece of me. And I realized, man, even at three hundred bodies, I have not fixed this. Mm. I have not found my identity. And I believe that this person just has not found himself. And so mm -hmm. he's searching. He's, he's lost. And it's interesting because you can have absolute intention in one part of your body and, none, and one part of your life and none in the other. Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah. see, I realized, and, and, and I realized that I, I was living that way personally, mm -hmm. you know, even prior to us starting this show, me and Ryan, we had a very successful business and um, kind of had these little lackluster relationships that we had kind of got, got out of around the same time. Mm -hmm. And we realized that, the, the weird thing, it was a weird part of life because we had this free time we didn't know what to do with because we had delegated so much of the business and we had this free time now that we wasn't used to. 
And business wasn't really fulfilling us as much. Wow. So we started kind of studying these different parts of life. We started reading books on manhood, on marriage, on relationships. Um, and that's when we went down this whole, you know, uh, rabbit hole yeah. of, of life. Of, yeah. what we called it the life-ish. Because yeah. <laughs> all we did was study the, the business-ish, wow. which we had a, a ton of success in. Wow. But as we were studying, we were realizing like our relationships with our parents, our relationship with the women in our lives, our relationships as brothers, our relationships in these other ways were not great. And when we looked at the spectrum and how we started to rank ourselves, it was actually very weak when we were esteemed and respected by other strong men. Mm. Other businessmen in the space held us at high regard, and I'm probably not the best son to my mom. Talk wow. heavy. You wow. know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I really didn't understand. I was I was a terrible boyfriend in my relationship. And I want to say terrible is in it wasn't it, I didn't have the level of intention I should have. Yeah. And this is, I mean, that was literally the inception of Harley Initiated, mm. wow. why this all came to be. And that could be very confusing to a brother who's having absolute success in one life, in one part of his life, mm. ha has absolute intention in that part of his life. Mm -hmm. so you could, he could give you down to the metric, the mm. goals for his business. Mm -hmm. But we see in the relationship life, it's casual, mm. it's fun, it's loose. And how do you even tell that brother that he doesn't have intention there, mm. that he's lost in that area of his life mm. when he's achieved these levels of success? Good. You can't convince that brother that. It's that's good. very yeah. difficult. It's good. So, but is that the case? A brother even that's able to achieve success at the highest levels in one area, <laughs> but is dating and living casually in his area in, 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 the, in, in that regard of like women and relationships, is it safe to say that he also too is lost? Hit, hit yeah, I mean, I think that you can quantify the the metrics different between casual and strategic and how the focus is aligned in different aspects. I think that you can tell the value system of a man when he has nothing, when he has everything and when he's under the influence. Wow. So <laughs> if my value system wow. is rooted in. I'm building this and this is getting all of me, then what he's basically saying is I don't have the capacity to develop this portion of me so that I become a whole man. Mm. So I'm comfortable with being partial because this part of who I'm developing mm. is bringing me the most pleasure at wow. the moment. This is where I find my value. This is where I find my identity. So this is going to give all of me this is going to get all of me so I don't have the capacity to give myself to this. So even though I realize that there's a void there, I won't be intentional and strategic about filling it. Mm. I'll just keep placeholders. Dang. So because all of me is focused on this success, because this is where I find my value. This is my value system. This is my belief. So it's hard to tell a man who has wrapped his entire identity around this one part that he is missing different parts of him but the totality of a man is what we need to be focused on is mm. yes are you functioning at a high level financially are you successful in your business yes but how is your mental health yeah how's your emotional health how is your relational intelligence how is your um your your physical health where are we because if you are only giving, if you're giving everything you have to mm -hmm. one area of your life, what you are doing subsequently is you are self-sabotaging yourself Ooh. because you are only, you're, you're boosting yourself up on a stool with only one leg. Wow. That's it. Damn. So I have no balance mm. because I'm, I'm trying to balance on this one leg, one this leg. one pendulum because this is the only thing that gets my focus, my energy, and my and the totality of who I am. So it's it's trying to get a man to see that, yes, you may be successful here, but that doesn't make you whole. Your success doesn't make you whole. Your success just gives you the ability to be more of who you are not. <laughs> wow. And who are you without the success of that business? Who are you without the applause in this particular area? And that's how you really know 
Am I broken or am I not? Yeah. <laughs> to know if you're broken, I love the illustration of that that stool with one leg. Like when you pull the leg from yeah. under that stool, when you pull that check away, and that's why the pandemic led so many people to depression and suicide. <sighs> because without this check, I don't know my name. Yeah. <laughs> like without the, the they call them the hoes or whatever. Without these women chasing after me, <laughs> is that is that what they Can say? I say that? They call them hoes. Without them, I don't I don't know my name. So imagine the mat. So to determine if you're broken, I would I want you to self assess if those things were at were threatened and if the, the rug was pulled under you for the things you've been holding on for your identity. Who are you? Mm. Who are you? Are you anchored in being able to, like my brother said, that's why like, I could go into a relationship with my wife, whether it's a prenuptial or not. Like, man, I'm who I am. Like, I'm I'm founded on ho- who God says I am. So I don't have to necessarily go into this thing. Well, I have to protect these assets. He's saying that because I have to protect these assets because without these assets, I don't know who I am. <laughs> I'm no longer, like, if I give you half of me, then I'm no longer fully me. That's why it's such a threat. Like, that's not a threat. Like, take it half my money. Take it half my money. I'm going to build it again. We're talking like, about practice. Talking about? Like, what? Right. What are you talking right. about? Right. Like, that's that's not me. That's not the fullness of who I am. And so I think it's a it's an identity issue. Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, man, we're about to talk to this brother tonight. Uh-oh. This parts of this, but I, I, and I don't want, I don't know this, brother. I'm just, I'm just throwing the questions out, by the way. Uh-huh. I'm just throwing the questions out <laughs> oh, no. tonight, just so we know. Talk to the brother. That's afraid and sees marriage as the loss of freedom. Oh, yeah. Plenty, that, plenty of that like sees that. marriage as the handcuffs. Oh, yeah. Right? Instead of the elevation. Mm-hmm. Right? Because you, you, you kind of know how it is. Like, yeah. we've seen homies get married and be like, oh, damn. Yeah. You know? <laughs> you it's know? over. It's over. It's over. We lost one. It's over. <laughs> so he, so it's over. That's kind of the culture, you yeah. know. Um, among not all men, but some men. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of men. Mm-hmm. Many men. Many men. So mm-hmm. talk to me about that. If a brother's feeling that way, them them on the fence brothers right now we talking to. Yeah. What would you say to that? I would say that if a man sees the confines of marriage as shackles and as chains, then they have a warped view of what shackles and chains are. Because you are shackled and chained to the perpetual cycle of unfulfillment in your singleness. Because I am perpetually trying to fulfill myself in multiple people. It's literally like I'm trying to start a car and every two feet, the car shuts off and I have to restart it. Do you understand the level of frustration that would be in your heart, mind, and soul if you're trying to get somewhere and you have to start your car, you drive two feet and the car shuts off. Then you have to restart it and you drive two feet and it shuts off. You are bound to live a life back, like literally handcuffed and shackled to this unfulfilling process because I have to restart it every single time I'm connecting with someone. Mm -hmm. So freedom, I think the illusion of freedom is is really what we mask our inability to be vulnerable and take the risk to be safe. What we call freedom is just our fear. Mm. We're afraid. We're afraid that if I give myself fully to one woman, will she love me for real? If I'm really truly honest and I really am truly to where I give her the raw me, the, 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 the moments of uncertainty, the, the trauma of my past, If I give that to her, will she accept me? Will she beat me down? Will she belittle me? So we, what we'd say is, you know what? I'm I'm, going to be free. I'm not going to be shackled. I'm not going to be bound and I'm not going to have a ball and chain. I'm not going to be tied to a woman who loves me unconditionally. Mm. I'm not going to be tied to a woman who supports (laughs) me and believes in me and prays for me when I'm (laughs) sleep at night. I I mean, that's, that is, that is yeah. the worst life I could possibly imagine yeah. to be with someone who knows the real me, the internal issues, my struggles, my fears, my vulnerabilities, and chooses to love me anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is shackles, and that's that's a ball and chain. Give hook me up, brother. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to somebody who is going to see the best in me and speak to the king in me when I don't even see it. Someone who has the vision to say, you know what? I know that you're down on your luck and I know that you want to beat yourself up. I know you just lost $100,000, but I believe in you. Mm-hmm. You don't get that in this freedom. You tell these these women that you are casually dating, man, I just lost $100,000. Oh, you know what? I think uh, I got to get up early tomorrow. So I'm going to just, I'm going to head on. I hope, I hope you figure that out. Mm -hmm. That's so true. Mm -hmm. But that's freedom though. Mm. That's what we label as freedom. Being in a space where I'm unfulfilled. I'm living a life where I am waking up alone. I don't have somebody to speak to the king in me, to support me, that I can be emotionally and mentally and physically safe with. I can't even venture into an aspect of physical safety with you because I don't know what you're doing. I don't know who you're messing with. I don't know what's on the other side of this, this call log. I don't. So you telling me to live in a place where I have no safety, no certainty, no comfort, no support. And no woman who is able to speak to the king in me, support me, pray for me, believe in me, love me unconditionally. And that's shackles. Mm. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, no, no. Oh, it, I'm, okay. I mean, I'm just, you know. No, nah, I mean. Make it make sense. You spoke to him. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I, I really think you spoke to him. That's good. You speaking to us. We, we, don't, we, don't, <laughs> we don't have those kind of conversations with brothers though. I don't mm. think we see it like that. Mm. You know, we don't see marriage as this thing that is going to allow us to unlock this new relationship or part of ourselves that we've never probably even even accessed. Yeah. We don't see it like that. We see it as something that keeps us away from the candy. Mm. Like we don't get we don't get the cookie jar. No, no more candy. Eat your vegetables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Marriage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Marriage right? is vegetables. It's vegetables. <laughs> Go brush your teeth. Do yeah. your chores. Yeah. <laughs> but because they've labeled marriage as vegetables instead of the meal and the dessert. Come on, on now. Because we think that it's I, I just I need to go over here to get candy. Well, I got candy in my marriage. And isn't that what the child does with junk food when they see the parents eating steak? When my, my, my daughters and my son sees me eating steak with the broccolini and the mess, they be like, eh, Daddy, can I have the chicken nugget? You remember the one you bought when it was, you put in a freezer, <laughs> the dinosaur one? The one that's literally the created chickens. in a laboratory. And, oh, and the blow pop. For that child, when they look at the full meal, you know what I'm saying? With the with the with the full entree, and they look at that and they they see labor, they see dullness, they see nasty, mm. because they have an immature mind. And so I would challenge the man who sees marriage as this oh, it's responsible. It's just like man, maybe if your mind developed, you'll be able to see the full meal as what it truly is and understand the satisfaction that comes with it. See Mm. all the, all the, the blow blow pop and the Jolly Ranchers gave you was cavities. All the little dinosaur, (laughs) dinosaur joints to give you, there's little drops of poison that you putting in your system that eventually will hurt you later on. Red dye. Red (laughs) dye, the red, the hot Cheeto man. And we're, it's just, we're so afraid because we don't look at the fact that look, you take that poison over time, it's a depo- It's a deposit. All the time that you spend wasting your time with poison is a deposit. The time you spend with a woman that you that that loves you and cherishes you, we're scared, we're scared, so we don't put no deposits. We'd rather do penny stocks. We put a penny here, penny there, penny here, penny there. But a, a good investor will tell you, hey, take a solid chunk of money and mm-hmm. put it in a reliable stock. Don't take a hundred pennies and put it into all these crazy stocks. And I think men are just like, if I put a hundred here, then it, uh, it's it's a hundred. That's too much time. It's like, no, nah, you put a chunk of money in, you'll see a greater return. And I think we're just so afraid of surrender. 
we're so afraid of giving up because we think that investment is a loss. And any good investor will tell you an investment comes with risks, but investment, a good investment is not a loss. But that money just leaving hands, we think it's, oh, it's a loss. That's why, that's why immature people don't invest. Go ahead. Now hold your, hold your thought, hold your thought, hold your thought. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because man, big shout out to Orlando. But give Yo. shout outs right now. Oh, Please listen, give another, give the it's shout outs. It's going insane right now. We have to, we have to, we have to show love to the people right it's, now. It's even, it's difficult for me to keep up with the chat. It's going so crazy. It's going insane. I mean, and then the thing you got wifey and KN going crazy, holding down the chat and it's still Thank too you. much. Thank you, Janelle. Shout out to I the did, moderators. I, right, I did the count so far and this is a rough count, okay? hundred and seventy new members tonight. Wow. <laughs> that is insane. Well, there we go, sound the, effects. The, the, there we go. <laughs> right, right. The highest we've ever had was 30. This is insane. Fellas, this is a record-breaking night tonight. It's record-breaking. That's record-breaking. This is for y'all. Come Let's, on. Yo, please. Come on. And not only that, so we should, all the guys who voted early on that first poll, they should all be members by now. Yeah, and absolutely. we had five guys. First off, we probably had 10 guys in total to ever call in on initiation hotline tonight we have five guys consecutively wow. call in on the hotline wow That's so the fellas really the really the brothers is coming in message. yes and see and listen this and gives me this is how we know what we should be what and, we should and, be doing and here's too. the thing man these are the media outlets that we want to be growing that we want to be blowing up you know how hard it is to get conversations like this to go viral look on your timeline it yeah. don't happen so Ooh. i appreciate y'all for investing in this and being and, and and really helping us put a completely different energy into this world, which is what we're doing right now, because this is powerful what we're doing. Because unfortunately, this kind of content is going against the grain. Yeah. But go ahead and give some shout outs. It's to the going crazy. Right so now. I got to give shout outs to the people that's giving the membership. So we shout got out to Taisha. Shout out to TD. Shout out to Orlando, who's giving like fifty of them tonight. He, he's, wow. just, yeah. he's, nuts. he's just going nuts. <laughs> shout out to uh, Sarita, Janelle. Therese, Taisha, shati has been going crazy tonight too. I mean, just to, I don't know. This is crazy. This is like. <laughs> it's so many. It's just love. I wish I can hug and kiss every single one <laughs> of y'all. Cause I, yeah, cause I'm telling you, I really feel part right. of a wonderful family right now. And shout out to Pumpkin too. I'm gonna just throw this in there. Shout out to Pumpkin for some love. She said, hey, look, amazing episode. Bring the guys back. That's clear. We definitely wow. want y'all to come back, right? That's awesome. But she's got a special request, which I really love. She says, if it's possible, before we end, can Will and or Ezekiel, maybe we do like a, a little versus, yeah. do a prayer mm -hmm. specifically for the men before y'all leave tonight? It's going to be, it's going to be, yes. Absolutely. I love that. Definitely yeah, Will. Let me let y'all know, when Will pray, it's over. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. That's what's it's up. over. Okay, so y'all so know y'all got to hang around and stay for the prayer, but I want to keep this conversation going. I don't even want to stop it. Because what, what you got for the people? Well, so I do got a question. Can I can I throw another question out there? Oh, go go ahead, go ahead, go man. ahead. Do your thing. Do your thing. Where you at? So right here, we we we. I want to keep this momentum because <laughs> let's roll it. Let's roll it. <laughs> we talking about the palette. Mm, that's we, what we I was to going to say. See that Refining we on the same, we on the same page. Because now, see me, you wear a wheel. <laughs> see the Jacksons. The Jacksons, <laughs> the Jacksons are Jacksons all something else today. Because <laughs> you talking about wanting to go to from candy to now broccolini. Come on, man. You know what I'm saying? Come on. Salmon. Come on. Going to another, uh, upgrading your palate as a man. Come on. How, as a man, do we view that differently? How do I take that image, that version of marriage, that candy-like version that I have of it, and change it? How do I upgrade my palate? What does that look like? You got to change where you eat. So it's impossible to be in an environment where you're surrounded by people who only desire candy and expect your desire to change. So if like you think about, we just came off of Thanksgiving, the whole goal for the children is to get up and move from the kitty table to the adult table. You got to be able to have the, the confident, um, knowledge and awareness that I got to change where I'm eating. If I only am surrounding myself who are cult with people who are cultivating a desire for candy, I got to change my, my, my dining group because I desire to eat on a different level, which means I, I can't keep going and hanging out at a lower level fast food or candy shop. Mm. Because if we keep going back there, I'm going to keep eating there. Yes, sir. So I got to be willing to say, okay, hey, you know what? 
I want to learn what it's like to eat on these levels. Wow. So let me make a reservation with someone else who eats on a higher level than I do so they can give me the game on how to refine my palate. Because if I if I expect to just change it on my own or just that the people around me are going to automatically shift and say, we are all going to desire this new palate, because that's what a lot of men do is we want to all transition together. We want the we we this my bros like we 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 loyal even though we we spend twenty years loyal to dysfunction loyal to immaturity loyal to toxicity but we're loyal so whatever we decide to do is what we're going to do mm -hmm. and people will mm -hmm. stay stuck in these cycles where we're settling for candy Oof. and we can't break the settling cycles until somebody says you know what I just keep getting cavities come on and now my teeth hurt. And now I can't, I can't process even what I've enjoyed for such a time because I realize the pain that it's causing me. Now I, I realize I don't have fulfillment. I realize that I don't have any peace. I realize, so I need to change what I'm eating. I need to change my diet. And I don't know, which is why people who, who have been eating bad their whole lives, what do they do? They get a nutritionist. Mm. Hey, all I know is chips and candy and blow pops and oatmeal cream pies. I need a plan. Mm. And then they bring someone in who is capable to say, hey, this is the plan. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to throw away and not eat again. Mm. So you got to change who you're eating around and where you are eating. Because if you think you're going to go back to the same place around the same people who are eating the same thing, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing, expecting different results. Come on. So I wow. keep going back and eating the same thing with the same people. And you know what, what, what men will do is they'll force themselves to stomach the pain of eating it, even though they know that it doesn't fulfill them. Come yeah. Because ah, this yeah. is what been the, been there. this been is asked. what the crowd is doing. Right. So I'm in here and now I'm uncomfortable. And now I'm thinking about it before they even bring the blow pops out. I'm thinking about, man, I, I, these are starting to make my stomach hurt. Yeah, but I can't, I can't show this vulnerability around the boys. I gotta be, I gotta be a man. I gotta just eat my lollipop. I gotta take uh, that. Be but, but check this out, though. Well, not to cut you off. No, it. yeah. We then get an addiction. Yes. For the blow pops, we, we develop an addiction. Yeah. Even though it makes us sick. Yeah. Yeah. When you so are addicted to addicted something to that it. makes you sick. <laughs> that's it right when you are addicted to something that is making you sick and then we wonder why we keep passing down these generational illnesses <laughs> i gave a whole lot of s's because i need you to feel that <laughs> illnesses is this. that's four generations right there because right. it's yeah. being passed down which is why we now we're not going from boys to men we're going from men to boys wow because we keep passing down these addictions. And let's let's like let's let's That's get so to good. the place where we as a culture there needs to be some level of accountability. Yeah. We've been celebrating the the you know the trick or treat uh, uh bowls for too long like okay, by the time we all get to a certain age we should look at each other and it's not to say hey if you're single then you're in a bad place, but it's to say what is your purpose and vision cuz I I feel like the in in general we could get together 10 guys in a room and just talk about how many women we smashed and we all celebrated in the last year and oh, okay she was this and she was that like what about like are you looking into building a family anytime soon you want to build a legacy what about your legacy what about financial legacy we celebrate the mess and i will want to say like for the men that say man man it's just like i'm thinking about marriage and it's just like it seems like it's hard and it seems like it's a lot of responsibility yes dang right because as adults, as children, we look at our parents and they work and they're like, oh, that's that seems like work. It seems like a lot of re responsibility. Yes. And that's a part of it. Men want authority, but they don't want responsibility. Yeah. You want a beard. You want a beard, but you don't want to know what it takes to actually sacrifice for your home, <laughs> to actually stand up and be held accountable. Because as a man, you want women, uh, your women and children to be subservient and you want to have authority over them, but you don't want to be responsible for them. You don't want to lead by example. You don't want to model a uh, 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 morality and core values, but you want to dominate women. You want to sleep with a lot. You want all the benefits of authority, but you don't want the burden of responsibility. 
And I think we we cannot have our cake and eat it too in that way. God has designed us to, yes, we, des- we desire to walk in authority, but every good gift that he gives, he expects stewardship in return. He was like, I'll give you fingernails, but you got to cut them, cut them every, every so now and then. I'll give you a body, but you got to wash it every now and then. Every good thing, he says, okay, I expect you to take care of it, protect it, and invest in it. And as men, if we're called to lead, then we have to be attracted to not just the authority, but the responsibility to stand up and say, you know what? I desire the work of a husband. I desire the responsibility of a father. Yeah, it's, it's going to take my attention. It's going to take some time. It's going to take my investment. That's a risk. Yeah, yes, yeah, a risk, but it's a worthy risk. We, we, we will claim every other risk valuable enough. Like I invest in a whole you always in real estate. You invest in a whole real estate in the in the trash market because somewhere <laughs> in the back of your mind you can make twenty two thousand dollars. So twenty two thousand dollars is worth more than a legacy of young black boys saying, "You know what? Black my mother is valuable. So now my sisters are valuable, and now I'll be able to value the woman around me. So it's more valuable to make twenty two thousand dollars than to see your sons stand up and value the same things that you do." Yeah, we got life twisted. That's the and so we're literally comfortable and not just comfortable. We celebrate men with pacifiers in their mouth. Mm, Damn, celebrate men drinking milk out of bottles and culturally it's become the norm. And so when we see people eating steaks, that's people in other cultures and people in other uh, capacities. We look at them and say, that's too much work. People that's walking around with families and leading their families and building legacies. That's a lot of responsibility. I'm looking for I'm looking for candy. I'm looking for milk. We got to we got to rise. We got to rise. And the beautiful part, I just what you when you said we look at something and then we want to dominate it. But going back to your question that you asked some time ago, what's the purpose of marriage? The Bible was talked about how you're supposed to be fruitful, mm-hmm. multiply, replenish, subdue the earth and have dominion. Right. So I can dominate alone, but I have dominion when I step into the foundational confines of the relationship that God intended for me to have. And it's accepting that responsibility that leads me to a place of dominion. But what we want to do is we want to dominate moments and not have dominion for a lifetime. (sighs) That's so good, bro. Dominate moments. Just a small facet. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, y'all breaking it down tonight. This is I, I'm not gonna lie, man. This is you know, this is this is for me. You know what I'm saying? Agree. Likewise. This is for Likewise. me. Like I'm I, I can honestly say, like, hardly initiate has changed my palate. Mm, wow. You know, over the next few. So even I want the brothers to hear that too, because you know, my and and I'm still in a in a space where my palate is still changing. Wow. You know, like I'm I'm still in the conversion process yeah. as you know, I've I've recently made the decision to to be uh, uh intentional over the last few years. And you know, that's a really good point. Like the brothers that are in here are already that that's committed to be here every episode, they're in the process of changing their palate. Wow. The brothers that even this popped up on your feed. You've already been watching things that's been changing your palace. Uh, like it's certain brothers that's doing things in that way because I seen I I literally seen it happen to me, and it clicked. I forgot when it clicked for me, but I'm always personally preaching intention. Yeah, where because I mean you I mean me and Ryan could tell you like that's my business partner. Me and we don't play about this our third one together. Wow. And the thing about it is, it was crazy when I realized that that same level of intention. In this area of my life, I'm casual over here. In this area of my life, it's good, bro. As a matter of a fact, all of the energy, vision, my resource, everything I'm building here, my casual nature here might even be able to destroy what I'm building over here. Come on, bro. This isn't even congruent. Come right. On. When I'm Come looking on. at that in that way, Just reckless at that so point. Not actually, casual. if I even really care about reckless. this. Yeah. I have to actually invest in this. Now, this actually is a part of this because I need this to take this to the next level. I have exposure here. There's risk here. Yeah. If Come this on. is not all put together here. Time not, preaching. If there's not intention in these <laughs> different areas. And learning. And learning. Yeah. But again, 
that's the palette changing. That's mm. good. And it's for me, you know, it really not helped my palette personally because every brother, you know, I don't know what you, you know the brothers' value systems are based on and built on, but my value system is heavily based on growth and it's getting good. better. It's good and and evolving on a regular basis. Mm. And I realized that there was a flaw in mm. how I was moving versus my value system. Mm. Because literally claiming that I'm casual in this area is committing to not evolving. Yeah. Because evolution like is intentional. Come on. Growth is intentional. So there, the, I, 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 and you, it's crazy. When, when that hit me, that's when I was like, bam. That was like a major epiphany that's good. where my palate evolved instantly at that point. All of a sudden, broccoli started looking real sexy. That's right. <laughs> so, bro, so see, and that's what, the, that's what the brothers have to do. It's like yeah. that that discovery process yes, sir. of you being able to go from that one place to the next, you're going to have to figure what that, that's like to you. But being in, in environments where brothers already have the palate, that's like 90% of the battle. That's yeah. good. Yeah, that's good. You're going to feel stupid, like sucking on a pacifier or all that. Like they eat steak every day and I got this pacifier, this bottle is stuck. Throw this bottle out of here. Let me For try real. that grilled chicken. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, when you be around some people that really got some money, and they'd be like, Man, I love this Pinot. You'd be like, Pinot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let, let me get that. Let me get yeah. that right one. That, that yellow one. You got to develop it. Yeah. But, man, y'all, y'all really blessing the people tonight, man. Yeah, right. And, and I mean, this was this was incredible. We got some super chats that Definitely. came in. For the people. We, we got to take care so, of these super listen, chats. Real quick. Go ahead, get these last cohort of super chats in. Get your questions in. These brothers got wives and families to get back right. to. So get these questions in now so we can get it to them. But let's go ahead and hit it. Shout out to Nicole, Brittany Hood, and Kimberly Kid for all more love. Just more love, more memberships. It's going crazy. It's definitely over 200 by now already. I don't even got to count. Shout out to, uh, I mean, we just got so many so many of these things. Let me see. Let me see where I'm going to start. Let's start with Saritha. We, we owe Saritha this because she's been, she been being patient with us. She says, as one who is more at peace being single, do you believe that is it is healthy for someone to remain single? No sex. So she says pure. So no mm -hmm. side situations, just being single and never get married. And could you answer that from the male and the female, for the male and the female? Is that cool? Just yeah. being single? So I think that everybody, we have free will, right? And you can create a life that you enjoy. I think that you rob yourself of stepping into the totality of purpose and what, what God wants to do in the earth. You rob the earth of your legacy seed or even the ability to to experience the fullness of what god has in store um i think that you can have a a great life and be content and enjoy your life and be intentional on where you are i just also do believe that there is more that is available so i think that you can have a, a great life and you can accomplish some great things and you can be content there um, I do think also that there is just a, a option of more for you. That doesn't make your life um, less valuable. It doesn't make it less potent. I just think that there's more that you can actually experience. It's it's like having the awareness of of knowing what the end is going to be, and you you get there and you say, okay, I lived a great life. But man, I could have did all of this as well. Like, so I, I think that you could have a great life, and 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 if you're secure in being single, I think that you know that's completely your option, and and you can really enjoy the life that you live. But I do think that there's an option for more available for you because we were created from relationship for relationship. So I just think that there's an aspect of of life that is is not being tapped into. And I will say this, um, because that's that's a, that's can be a sensitive question. Sometimes people get into relationships, and you know they get older, they may have had become a widow, or they just may not be into it. I'll say this as a caveat to what he said, especially if if you've been hurt 
uh, in a situation. And from that place of hurt, you're deciding, hey, I don't want to have a relationship because I'm afraid of being hurt again. Mm -hmm. Of course, yes, that's on your free will. But just make sure that you look back and make sure that, you know, assess your heart to see if there is some damage there that you're trying to protect yourself from, that you're closing that door prematurely. But I will say, absolutely. I believe that if you don't believe that, you know, God is calling you to a relationship and you want to be single, I, I will say to, to close yourself off to community would be more of the travesty, yeah. meaning there are parts of you that need to be experienced. I'll put it like this. There are parts of God that he wants to show through you mm -hmm. and that happens in the midst of community. So that may not happen with you as a wife, but it can show up with you as a sister, yeah. with you as a mother to others. So as long as you allow God to shine through you in a communal form, then I believe that you can still gift the world with parts of you that God wants to shine through. And so I, I don't feel like you need to feel condemned or feel like, uh, you know, you're you're not walking in purpose because you're single. I think God can absolutely use you th throughout scripture. Paul was single. Jesus was single and he mm -hmm. still fulfilled purpose. Uh, but I will say that make sure that you're not closing yourself off the community. And if you feel like you've been damaged romantically and that is your purpose for saying, I don't want to be in a relationship, make sure you uncover that, deal with the bitterness and make sure that your heart is clean so that if God does have that door open for you, you're making the right decision and not based on hurt. Yeah. Yo, this is incredible. Did anybody hit the like button tonight? It's like at 30 likes. I've never seen that before. No, it's a, well, no, we had a thousand likes, bro. Oh, okay. It must be my son must be going on my thing. It's only at 30. I'm you like, yeah, this but y'all still do need to hit the like button. <laughs> we still don't have enough likes. That's so, a fact. So you, you were right, Ryan. Okay, you were good. Right. Yeah, Shout out to Shaka, Shati, and Yali. Just saying the platform just really been showing out. You know, the, the platform, they love the platform. So anytime we get people that say they love it, it means we're doing the right things. Mm -hmm. And which means we got to continue to do even more things, Absolutely. which we're working on. So we got some questions coming in. I know y'all brothers got to go. Shout out to uh, Sunshine and Beauty. She says, if a woman makes decisions that does not provide a safe space emotionally for a man, how can she course correct? In what situations would you suggest she correct? Or, yeah, in yeah. what situations? Like, mm -hmm. how does she? How does she course correct? Yeah. If she makes a decision that makes uh, the space unsafe for a man. Pretty much. She didn't do a good job with making the space safe for, or somebody, this hypothetical situation. Yeah. They didn't do a good job for making the space safe for a man to express himself emotionally or be vulnerable. So right. now she's asking mm -hmm. pretty much how, she how does she course it. correct or yeah. should she just move on from the relationship altogether? Wait, exactly. wait. So, so if she's in the relationship and she yes. wants to continue the relationship, yeah. I say that she needs to acknowledge it mm -hmm. in a very a significant way. Because once a man feels like he cannot be safe in that space, then that that opens a door for him to want to escape that unsafe space. Yeah. Everyone escapes unsafe places. And so you don't want a man in a relationship with you to feel like he has to escape. Even if he's in the relationship, he can still escape mentally. He can still escape emotionally. Right. So I would say she needs to address it. She needs to ask for forgiveness, but then also ask him how she can do better. In what areas would she he like to see her grow in? What ways, like practical things? So what things can I say? How when when I respond like this, how does it make you feel? Literally put herself on the chopping block to say, in what ways have I made you feel unsafe? And how can I do better? That is the most vulnerable thing to say. It's like yeah. I've messed up. Yeah. Teach me how to be better. Teach me how to be safer for you. And for, for man, it might throw him off and he might have to think about it for a few <laughs> days. But you've given him so much power. But instead of what you've done is you've actually empowered him to be free, which has empowered you to love him better. So you're, it's a dual empowerment for each of you to grow. So I think that just acknowledging it and giving him the ability to speak into that will actually really correct for you guys for the future. That's good. I love man. that. Will, you got anything to add to that one? No, he summed that up perfectly. <laughs> I like it. That good, was so good, 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 bro. Yeah. So we got some, uh, I would say these are personal questions. Yeah. Um. So shout out to Deja and Anissa as well. So I, we kind of throw these together. So the first thing is, how did both of you guys meet your wives? <laughs> so I met my wife through um, mutual connections. We were actually connected in some of the same circles um and we actually started having conversations about purpose stuff at first right like 
um, I think the first message or, or communication was, um, so I wrote a book, it's called When Life Happens. And in the chapter, uh, it's all in how you sway. There's an analogy where it's talking about like palm trees and the difference in how you matriculate through storms, the difference between the oak tree and the palm tree and how a lot of people try to be firm and strong in storms, but you take a lot of damage and you lose a lot of branches. The palm tree has the ability to sway and to actually matriculate through them and it's an acronym. So anyway, she sent me this picture of her reading this chapter while she was landing in Florida, seeing palm trees. And she was like, yo, this is crazy. X, Y, and Z, you know, your book is great. And so we start talking about purpose stuff. And then as the conversation evolved, you know, we start realizing a lot of our interests and just uncanny similarities. And then, you know, we were both into music and we both are musicians. And so then, you know, I we was talking, I said, you know, how about you just send me a number so I can send you some of the music that you can check out. So um, then we just started communicating, man. And then, um, you know, it was, I, I was in uh, Atlanta and she was in Ohio. And I said, you know what, just got to see you. You know, I was traveling for business and um, let me let me make this trip. And we met each other and it was literally like love at first sight. Well, what made you want to marry her? Um, everything that aligned not only with, she was the answer to prayers that I either gave up on or felt unqualified to pray. So in the aspect of all of the things that I, I really wanted in a spouse and the things that I, I really desired that I had succumb to the idea that what I really wanted didn't exist. She literally presented all of those qualities of how she relates to God, how she handles people, you know, cause I'm really big on how people treat people, you know, her heart, her selflessness, her spirit, her compassion, her peace, her literally being one of the first people to make force me and fight me for her for me to allow her to help me, you know, so showing all the qualities that she was a help me, that she was invested and in, that, you know, she, she, she had her own like ideas and dreams. And so that when we came together and we start building c collectively, it was just this conglomerate of not just only creativity, but passion and we could pray together and we laugh together. And so all of the qualities that necessarily fit not only where I was, because even when I met her, I had a lot of walls up. So she was able to scale some of those emotional walls and have the the intentionality to say, I'm not going anywhere and fit the mode, not just for where I was, but also for where I'm where I'm headed. I, so, I rock with that. I rock yeah. with that. Yeah, man, that's good, man. Well, shoot, I was 19 when I met my wife. Yeah, 19. Yeah, I met my wife wow. in, in junior college. So, Interesting. Yeah. And so, Jalayla, I know Jalayla. She's one of our 20 year old initiates. Oh, wow. So, I hope she's listening right now because nice. she's trying to figure out if she is even meeting the right people. <laughs> so, you was 19. So, it is possible. It is possible, man. Okay. When I met her, it was not love at first sight, uh, unfortunately. I met her. And at the time, I was just like, just locked into what I was doing. And, and she, she said, Hey, I want to come to your church. So, I was just like, Oh, she's just flirting with me. And she <laughs> actually came to my church three weeks later. And when she walked, in that door i was floored i was like oh my gosh i was like this is the same girl and i think what the lord did was he blinded me to her the first few times i saw her when she kept her word it opened my eyes and i was just like oh my gosh and to this day she's the most beautiful woman to me but i don't know why i was blinded to her the first few times and literally i fell in love with her love for the lord like literally i just was she testified to me for three months and before prior to that time i i, I was just a, a bad person but any woman i talked to after a week i was tired of them i never talked to a girl more than, than a week without me being tired and if i was i was just playing with her heart or whatever, but I was addicted to her love for the Lord. And I just fell in love with every part of her. And, you know, we became best friends, man. And to this day, I think that's the foundation of our relationship. She's my best friend and she's the most beautiful woman. <laughs> anyway, so, 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 I love that. Y'all met, met in church? We met at junior college. Junior okay. college. And junior then college. I fell in love at church. Ah, <laughs> okay, okay. Ah, okay. So, so question, follow up question. This is for Jalayla Allen. She actually sent in the question. Remember, context 20 years old yeah all right trying to find love 
How can you tell the difference between a friend that you love versus a friend you love in a relationship? So I can think that's one of the love versus in love questions. Yeah. And she says, basically, if both require the same thing, how can you really tell the difference? I think both of you guys have to be on the same page directionally. Mm -hmm. I don't think there is there has to be a huge difference in the beginning. And that's why you're not rushing into it. I don't think that you got to jump in two weeks after. I feel like, man, I care for this person. Let's get married. No, nah. you take that time to build and get to know that person. And I think, like I said, told the brother before, pray, pray mm -hmm. prayers, man. You'll begin to see even organically in the conversations, in your fellowship with each other, whether you guys should continue and take it and build step by step. So I don't recommend that people just jump into it on the simple fact that you guys are attracted to each other, build, have conversations, spend time with each other, observe each other in different contexts. And organically, I believe that those things develop and you could actually allow things to happen. Don't force it. Go ahead. If you had anything to say. No, that's okay. good, bro. Yeah. That was that's so good. Yes, sir. Man, let me tell y'all, y'all brothers in here, y'all saved somebody tonight. It's oh, a matter shit. of a fact. It's funny, man. I it's it's just so many catchphrases from tonight because you know what, what I see. I, I saw a young lady do, which I love. What? We was talking about the palate. Yeah. And we were talking about the vegetables. Mm -hmm. She was like, I'm Brussels sprouts. Come on. <laughs> uh, ladies, I'm if Brussels you, sprouts. If you because like, and, and, and look, that was good though. Yeah. Because right. you gotta make sure you actually vegetable. Hello. Come on. You gotta Come make sure Some of that you're gonna be giving piece, nutrients. Ten pieces of lemon pepper. Pop you know what I'm saying? Right. right. Pop hey, y'all that, right. that, that Bill Gates meat, right? right. So <laughs> what you gotta do is, ladies, Pop matter of fact, if you vegetables right now, I want you to put veggies in the chat right now. Right. Shout out to all if my you got some nutrients veggies. to give to a man, I want you to drop <laughs> Come on. veggies in the chat right now. Don't so comment if you just legs and thighs. Legs and thighs, don't comment. But if right. <laughs> Say we green, got a couple beans, more. We, we got a couple more, Shamira, right? Uh, listen, shout out to the legendary initiative, Shamira. Poised toe in twelve twelve. Y'all be having some crazy usernames. <laughs> Y'all be having some crazy ones. So shout out to, to Ripside, too. Shout out to all the initiates that are the first time joining the episode or the first time joining the channel. We appreciate y'all. Some of y'all are really just standing out. I mean, Ripside went from subscribing to joining the family to super chatting to sending over questions. So it just shows the level of engagement and level of impact that we have in just this single conversation and I just want to let y'all know that we appreciate y'all for not only showing support, but having the courage to join the community. And everybody who was sitting on the sideline, you see you got some very strong members that are so invested that they will actually invest in you so you can get a taste of what's happening. So that just shows, man, it's, it's really popping right now. And, and it's just, I mean, it's just so important, y'all, because we cannot, we, every member, a part of this channel, every subscriber, every liker, every commenter is a part of the growth of us being able to push this message out because that's what we're going to do. I mean, we've taken on the responsibility of wanting to make this love, make this marriage, make it sexy again, make family sexy. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Making, helping us change our palates mm -hmm. as a community. Yeah. Right? Which is one of the most important things that we can do to help repair and get us to the next level that we need to get to. That's good. And we need brothers like y'all up here facilitating, like mm -hmm. really able to give the game at the level that y'all have given it. Man. Line a round of applause for these brothers tonight yeah. because these I'm brothers, sure. the, oh, the, the mics oh, are flamed up right, right now. Right, this this, this will be on. this one gonna be one of the classics. Oh, it's definitely gonna man. be one of the classics. Love, yeah, family. yeah. It's, love. They are, people are already asking for the part two, so we're gonna have to see what we can do. These busy, these busy brothers, so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna have to talk off air, <laughs> offset for these brothers here. But yeah. I absolutely greatly appreciate this. But you know, we we can't. The people have already asked. Oh. Yeah. So we we can't on, man. Pray let y'all go. Come on, without you sending the people away with the prayer. So yes, so, so will can you lead us? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you, brother. Devil of Father God, we thank you for this moment. We thank you because before time began, you had this moment in mind. God, we thank you because you were intentional about creating a moment where men could come together to heal, 
to be developed, to be poured into and have a safe place to be vulnerable. God, I pray right now for every man that's watching this and that will watch this. I pray, God, that you would intentionally invest in their emotional state right now. God, I pray that every negative thought, every every area of toxicity, every cycle that keeps them bound in emotional captivity, let it be broken now in the name of Jesus. I pray right now that the generational curses of trauma, of abandonment, of neglect, of uh, uh, masculinity issues and identity issues, that they be broken now in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over their thought processes, over their emotional state, God. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would infiltrate the broken pieces and begin to mend them back together. I pray, God, that you allow them to identify themselves as sons who you've created them to be. They are not their trauma. They are not the result of of uh, failed relationships. They are not a failure that you have called them sons, that yeah. you have created them and established them for purpose, on, on purpose, purpose, and with purpose. So I bind up the plan of the enemy for their lives. Yeah. I command every negative thought, every self-sabotaging thought yeah. to be eliminated now in the right name now. of Jesus. I command every toxic relationship that is trying to keep them stagnant and unable to pursue their purpose. Let it be broken. Let it be severed now and forevermore. God, I pray right now that you just give them strength, give them confidence, give them the awareness and, and show them who they are. Reclaim their identity in you, God. I pray that everything that tries to keep them stuck, that you will literally lift them up out of the emotional quicksand that they have been drowning in. I pray, God, now that you release them from the shackles and from the, the inability to be vulnerable. I pray right now that you give them the comfort and the safe place for them to to understand that it's okay to be afraid, that it's okay to not know, that it's okay to be exactly where they are. Because right. if they let you in, you can meet them where they are and yeah. develop them and establish them into who you have called them to be. So I speak to the man who is called for purpose. I speak to the man who is a son. I speak to your identity mm -hmm. and I command the king in you to rise. I command the king in you to take your rightful place. Mm -hmm. I command the, the wandering and the the instability and the places where you are able to focus completely here and unable to focus here, that God will bring stability to your life, yes. that you will not invest completely just in one area, but you will be whole, mm. that there will be healing and wholeness that takes place in your mind and in your heart. I pray for it right now in the name of Jesus, Amen. that even while you sleep, that the things that keep you tossing and turning at night, that God will give you peace. I see some of you tossing and turning and the and have an inability to rest and your mind is at in a place where it is uneasy. So I speak to that area and command peace even in your home that the, that the angels would minister to you while you sleep that you would uh, that you would realize that you are not late and you are not forgotten. I hear that in the spirit that you are not late and you are not forgotten that God has not forgotten you and he has not changed his mind about your future. So I speak to you now that the king would rise and that every negative and tox toxic voice be removed, that even every every uh, satanic sabotage that's presented in the area of a brother, of a sister, of a, 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 of a, a, a boss, of a, uh, a, a leader, even toxic leadership. Yeah. Holy Spirit, that you would come in and bring clarity, remove the scales from their eyes and allow them to see you for who you are and for who they have been created to be. So we speak to the kings and command them to rise. We speak to the identity of the king that you would no longer run from the throne, but you would take your rightful seat in your place of authority. Because that is who God has called you and created you to be before the foundations of the world. So we thank you, Holy Spirit, for these men, for these sons, and for these kings. Mm -hmm. And I pray right now for even the women to come alongside them that will help them continue to cultivate into the men that you have called them to be. God, give clarity and understanding to women who are supporting men and, and allow them to align with the purpose and the plans that you have for their lives, that you would help them to align in the places and lead them and direct them and give clarity and direction as to who to align to and who to 
to support from afar, mm -hmm. that those who are not qualified or called to the evolution of the man, that you would allow them the strength and the courage to realize that this is not the place for them. God, mm -hmm. bring bring clarity to their decision making, yeah. God. And I pray that you would even allow the hearts of the women who were damaged by men who were ill prepared and men who were not in their proper place, that you would even minister to their hearts mm -hmm. and that you would show them their identity as daughters and that you would allow them to understand that you have kings in store for them and that they are not forgotten either. And for those who are maybe in a place where they are not even searching for a relationship, help them to find their identity in you and yeah. establish the purpose and the plans that you have for their life. I thank you for it, God. I thank you for this moment, for what you started. And he that began a good work is faithful and just to perform it, even until the day of Jesus Christ. I thank you. I pray a special blessing on these two brothers who have started this work. I pray, God, that you would send resources, that you would send support, that you would send creative genius, innovative ways to reach the masses. I pray, God, that they would never want for anything, that they would never lack, that you would give them clarity and guidance on the steps on how to develop and, and create a space where your glory can be revealed in their lives. Thank you for allowing them to create a platform that will be used to affect change in the lives of others. And I bind up the plan of the enemy on their lives. And I speak the peace and protection of heaven over them. God, we thank you for this moment. We don't take it for granted. I honor you and we thank you for what you started here tonight. And we give you glory for what you're about to do in tomorrow. In the mighty, matchless, and magnificent name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray. Amen. Amen. Oh goodness. What yeah. I tell you. What I tell you. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I feel like my soul just got massaged. <laughs> you know, faith kills anxiety. Mm, uh, yeah. So that you know, it is gonna have that healing, that healing power over you. Yeah. Man. Amen. 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 And listen, we're gonna end it right there on that. Thank you for blessing us tonight, brothers. Man, thank you for having us. Thank, thank you for you, blessing man. us tonight, brothers. So man. Yeah. I feel blessed tonight. And I know yeah, the people it went do down too. tonight. It went down. It for really, real. it really did too, man. I think all of y'all in here that stayed in here to the end and wrote it out with us all, all the way to the end of this very important message that the culture needs. Thank you for everybody that shared this, that joined, that continues to join, and that has and continues to support. What we doing here because i promise you we are building this together this much needed energy and platform in this world yeah and we're doing it with brothers like this right alongside of us this is so powerful but thank you guys so much for tuning into another episode yeah, don't forget the episode on sunday oh my goodness yeah y'all gotta this, look out for that one yeah let me tell you this episode on sunday is gonna be so heavy okay it's gonna be so heavy sunday at 5 p.m is when we're doing it and we coming right back every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. We are not taking breaks, y'all. I promise you. Yeah. We are walking in our work right now. And, and shout out to Lydia. Lydia, we're out of the UK. If if you in the chat, we just want to let you know that we appreciate you guys. When y'all email us, it may take us a minute because it like we is me and Ty really answering these emails. Like y'all email us, y'all chat us, y'all send over the people y'all want. We really take that seriously. She was the first and the only person to send us over to Clemence, who's pretty much from her home country. Mm. Clemence just so happened to recently move to Atlanta. Wow. We reached out to how we even found out about this couple. Wow. And um, they're definitely a faith-based couple, interable couple, like we talked about. But um, against all eyes, man, against all eyes, they really like really doing the love thing, That's you know. Yeah. And we had a chance opportunity to sit down with them um a couple of weeks ago. We dropping that on Sunday. That's gonna be a really dope experience yeah. for everybody. I mean, their their relationship is truly love personified in in some of the highest levels that we've never even seen um, as a culture, which is why it's so important to 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 showcase love at that level, which is beyond anything material mm -hmm. at the point that they've made it, and the, the 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 things that they have had to the obstacles they've had to overcome. You know, many of us have never. Ever, I mean, the things that you the, the at just week one, week two, week three in their relationships, the kind of conversations that they have had to have to get to the next level are things we might not even face because we take to granted throughout our entire relationship. Yeah. So it's a really good example of you know just love at the highest level. So definitely check that out. 
And um, again, man, I'm not gonna hold y'all. I'm gonna let y'all go ahead and get some sleep for tonight. But home wait, this bro, oh my god, you got some no, I just I don't, can we just stop and just celebrate you, brothers, man, just for the incredible work that you guys are yeah. doing, man. Yeah. Thank just, you, thank you. So exciting to be a part of this, man. Like this is Good literally time. changing the scope of how men are going to do life, love, and relationships. So this is powerful, bro. Yeah. We're looking for, you know, we got to run it back. And yeah. can I tell the people about something special? We for got sure. Coming up. So, Absolutely. Man, we got this uh, this event coming up on December 7th. It's a live event. It's called Relational Intelligence. I would love for all of y'all to come rock with me. Uh, okay. So, is that in Atlanta? Oh, it's going to be a virtual event. Virtual yeah, yeah, event. It's going to be a virtual okay. event. Yeah, it's called Relational Intelligence. My website is www.theofficialwilliamjackson.com. I would love to start continue this conversation. You got to send us that too because yeah, we're going to drop it in absolutely. the description for the video. Absolutely. Relational yeah, so intelligence. Relational intelligence. Woo! Yeah. You going to be a part of that joint? Man, I'll be watching. Come on. <laughs> okay. I need all y'all, man. I need my brother. So it's gonna be it's gonna be dope. It's gonna we're gonna we're gonna break some settling cycles. We're gonna talk about finding your purpose partners and we're gonna do some inner healing work. So it's Let's gonna be do good. it. I love so, that, yeah. man. So, Make sure you get us a link that. so we can drop it in the description. Absolutely. Did you have anything to tell the people? Man, as well? uh just yes. follow me, words by Ezekiel on Instagram. Right now I have a sale for the relationship cards I was telling you about. These are cars that if you're single, if you're in friendship, you want to ask those hard hitting questions, also lighthearted questions. You could ask them during game night, but also on personal dates. I have testimonies of people that said, I'm now have a fiance because of this. I'm now in a marriage because of these questions. And I asked them and I now we're able to see that we can rock together and roll together. So I want you all to get those as I'm link in my bio, man. Words by ezekiel.com or go to instagram words by ezekiel and it's in the link in my bio and right now they're the cheapest they've ever been get them now before monday they'll go back up and both Excellent. of these gentlemen yeah. they their instagram profiles just like always just check out the description and guys we've been getting your feedback we're going to update the way we do chapters to to more um be able to better navigate the actual three to four hour conversation. So we're going right. to up that coming soon, but always check the description. You'll see under guests, you'll see both of their pro profiles. So please make sure to show these brothers love, Dope. add them on IG and just let them know that you tapped into the conversation and you appreciate it. And listen, y'all already know guys, it's hardly initiated. We are out. Peace.